Welcome everyone. Today I have the pleasure of interviewing Josh Bilsma. He's the one presently climbing in the video, sending his first V13 called Spectre. He is a local Alberta legend known for bold highball first ascents and his overall extensive contributions to the development of new boulders throughout Alberta, including 800 plus new boulders cleaned, prepped, climbed, and documented. Josh has a unique perspective on Alberta bouldering history and its progress. So we'll be discussing those topics as well as Josh's personal climbing journey, grades, ethics, so forth. So without further ado, I hope you enjoy this episode as much as I did. I think just the, there's like a lot of lost history mm -hmm. and it's not like a, I'm definitely, get, like you said, we get to like the bouldering Alberta in the past and like, yeah, I'm not like an expert by any means on the stuff that came before I started or got into it, but you know, I know a little bit and then maybe, like I said, one of my biggest hopes doing this was like mentioning a lot of names, hopefully, okay. that then that might lead people to, or like you, maybe if like this goes well, then you're like, well, like Josh mentioned this person, this person, maybe that's like, right. Kind of have like a chain of stories. And uh, I always, anytime like you go to like Squamish or Bishop, like any of these places we go to, mm -hmm. I always liked really like studying the history section of the guidebook. Definitely. And kind of like, who are the people, like who are the lines, who are like, or what were the lines that kind of went up in what order? Yeah. And like knowing that story of the climbing is really cool. So, um, do you ever prioritize those climbs yeah. when you first arrive? So yeah. I would always, if there's a history section, like I'd go like underline all the climbs that got mentioned by name. Yeah. yeah. And I always thought that was more uh, fun than like doing the top hundred list or whatever they usually have. Cause yeah. a lot of times too, that's top, those really popular problems. It's often like they're close to the, tr like they get like, it's like they get a bonus star or two because they're close to the trail or gotcha. they they just have like a really unusual move and yeah, yeah you get on them you're like that wasn't that great mm -hmm. but then these climbs that have been singled out is like this is part of the story of the area it always it doesn't matter like if they're good or bad or like yeah. you're kind of like oh someone did this in it's like oh, 1970 yeah. with no pads and like high yeah. so it's like reliving their experience. Yeah. Getting a bit closer to the historical figures that came before. Yeah. yeah. It was always cool to me. So I just thought I kind of, uh, it's like the same reason why like, I started like making topos was around like 2013-ish, I guess. It was like, mm -hmm. I was the person who's like, I want to do more bouldering, but like, where is it? Yeah. yeah. So as much as I kind of like, I like to keep to myself or do my own thing. It's kind of like, if you don't put the information out there, that's like, then what are other people going to do? Yeah. And then that's same, like, I like, I always like the, the history and the story of outdoor climbing. I think that's what it has over top of indoor climbing is like, yeah, there's that permanence and story to it. So yeah, if, I have a hard time if someone's asked me to like, oh, can you share a little bit of this? Even if I'm like shy about it, it's like, okay, I, I kind of want to because I wanted that information. Yeah. So if people want it, it's good to have it out there. It's like, yeah, it's cool. So yeah, I thought it was a really good idea. It's like really excited when you asked, like you said. So for sure. Well, that's good to hear. Definitely. Hmm. So you said in 2013, you were looking into bouldering more. Does that mean that before that you were mostly sport climbing? Um, no. So I don't know if we want to get into like the whole kind of background to climbing for me, but, um, so I would have started in like 2005, I think. Okay. So I got into climbing, um, where like, that was like a, a thing I was doing. Yeah. Um, so just about two decades. Yeah. That's pretty um, awesome. So off the bat, it was like, my background was like playing hockey growing up and doing those kind of sports. So yeah. it made, I felt like competitions would be the, the thing. Like that's how, just how sports worked in my mind. So it's like, I started climbing 
and I was like in October or something, I think. And then uh, I saw there was like a, they're called like the C3 comps that okay. the Calgary Climbing Center would have. And was that the highest grade back then? No, it was just like, instead of like CCC, it was like yeah. C3. Oh, was, okay. So it was just like that. Um, and then at that time, Chinook was the only, like a stronghold was an independent gym. And then none of the other ones existed. So the Chinook gym was like the only one. Right. But yeah, there was like a comp there in December. And so I like went into that right away. And then um, competing in indoor climbing was like, made more sense to me. Okay. Um, which is probably the same as like most people, like kids getting into climbing now. But yeah, yeah. Uh, what was the gap between you starting climbing and then you competing? Like a month and a half. Or totally. <laughs> like as uh, soon as I started doing it, I yeah. thought, it's like, well, if I'm gonna do this thing, I might as well like take it serious. So yeah. I'll like see if there's any like competitions in Alberta. And right. there's, so I like, went in right away. And then, okay. Um, at, at what age would this have been as well? Uh, it was like 19. Okay. So. Interesting. We started around a similar time. Though. Yeah. Interesting. So, and then I'd say, yeah, it was like 2005 and then probably like 2006 to 2008, I'd like very sporadically climbed outside, like no sport climbing. Mm. Um, and, you know, I went to like Frank, um, like Big Choss, White Buddha, and then random stuff around like Jasper a few times. Okay. Um, so that was like in that like 2000, like I said, like 2006 to 2008 kind of. Um, and there's maybe like almost like close to a year where I didn't climb at all. Uh, and then I kind of got back into it. And then that's when I started like sport climbing more. Oh. And then 2010, 11 was like, yeah, then I was, started like projecting stuff outside. And then uh, I went to Bishop that Christmas and that was like my first big climbing trip. And then okay. that's what like then it's like, well, like outdoor climbing is the thing. So that's that kind of when that shift happened. That's interesting. And then I would say, yeah, 2013 winter was really like with like Dan from Red Deer, like Dan Anhorn, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. We kind of went to like, Buddha like every weekend it felt like right and then in the spring once it melted a bit we went to Choss and kind of like really like climbed pretty much you know 90 percent of the stuff at Buddha and then pretty much everything at Big Choss and then you know went to I, it was 2014 we went to like yeah Frank and then that's when everything kind of like took off so mm. okay that's kind of the short history like yeah background but, I'm a little bit curious. How did you do in the in the comps that you started doing not, one month into comps? Not good. <laughs> um, but they're totally it's totally different then too. Okay. So what, what was the format? Uh, it was like scramble qualifiers. Okay. Always. And so yeah, the first one I was like, I guess I should go on beginner because I'm a beginner. Right. But then you saw like there's problem one to problem fifty. And everyone's climbing on the same things. Yeah, you just like you're getting ranked against different people. For sure. Um, so that was kind of interesting. But yeah, it was always like scramble, and I think that was really good in a way because you saw like you could just watch like the best guys. Yeah. Um, on the hardest stuff, and you could like watch and learn, and then you could try that same thing right away. Yeah. So you weren't on like this set of problems and like coming out with five minutes and. You could just like project something basically, yeah. like, and yeah. and then the next comp I went. So right away, I mean, it felt like there's a lot of comp, more comps too, but there was another C3 comp that would have been probably a couple months later or something. And I just started registering in like open right away because okay. I thought it was like really it'd be really weird to like win beginner or intermediate because you're, you're like well you're not being compared against like the top people so yeah, yeah you didn't really win was like how i thought so i never did very good like it's kind of like a like a run of the like a maybe the top end of like the run of the male competitor I see, I <laughs> ever see. but uh <laughs> huh. no i wouldn't say i was good <laughs> or like quickly good or anything like that actually in grade seven so my friend 
was reading this like book into thin air. Okay. It was like about the Everest disasters. Yeah, yeah, I've heard of it. So I read that when I was like, yeah, like 12 or 13. And then that was like really fascinating to me. So I read this other book by that same author that's called like Iger Dreams. Hmm. And I had a bunch of like, it was a collection of like articles he'd written for outdoor magazines. And uh, so there's like stuff about, yeah, like climbing the north face of the Iger. And, yeah. I think like something like devil, like devil scum, like a lot of it was mountaineering. Or, but then there's one about John Gill, who is like a, the, you know John Gill? I don't know. So John Gill's kind of like the American, like godfather of bouldering. Oh wow. And like, so in, like people were like bouldering in font, like kind of earlier than that. Right. I feel like it's been like a hundred years now since people were bouldering in font, but uh, maybe like in the 50s, 60s kind of, uh, somewhere like late 50s to 70s, I have to double check, but so John Gill was like, he had been a gymnast okay. and then he got into climbing. So, and then he basically like was one of the first, if not the first like boulderers in North America. So he would just do like traverses on stuff and mm -hmm. highball things, like all sorts of things. Um, and he kind of like introduced like chalk. Really? He was like, because he's like, well, he uses in gymnastics. Yeah. yeah. And um, so, yeah, he was like way ahead of his time. And there's this article about him, and it just talked like the opening of that article was him kind of like dynamite. It was like, I remember the, the line was like, it was like a pencil with edge. And he was like, he dynoed and catch this pencil with edge. And I was like, oh man, that sounds like so cool. How yeah. And then it talked about like, he would do like one finger pull ups and like one arm front levers, like there's pictures of him doing one arm front levers, like black yeah. and white photos. Um, and then he did this thing in the Needles in like South Dakota called the Thimble, okay. which is, I think it's maybe like 512 something. But so at the time that was like super high level. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, kind of like, it was like a, like a high ball boulder, kind of like slabby and technical. And he was like training for this thing and he would like climb on like, He's like inside like an industrial building or something, or oh. like maybe it's like a gym. I don't remember what it was like a gym somewhere, but there'd be like those I beams and have like little nuts and bolts. Uh, and yes. you kind of like climb on these like nuts and bolts. And that's pretty hardcore. So all the like physical things he was doing kind of like blew my like, mind when, yeah, I was like 12 or 13. It's like, wow, that sounds crazy. Like, yeah. And that really stuck in my mind. Um, and then, yeah, once I was like done with all these other sport things, like, well, it's been super interesting climbing. Like, just try that. Yeah. Would you say that gentleman was kind of your inspiration, or not an idol by any means, but somebody that you wanted to emulate? And, you know, uh, to I mean, like you said, it definitely inspired me. The idea of like what he could do. Like, yeah. The idea of like, uh, you know, he'd like hang off like a door jam with one hand and do a pull up. For sure. It's just kind of, you know, it's like if you see someone like break dancing or someone like, yeah, they do physical things that you just like. That doesn't even look real. Totally. Yeah. So I think it was like, and I always like sports and training. So it's kind of like the physical part of what he was doing. Plus, like, there's kind of like the adventure element to it, and then mm -hmm. there's like the mountain aspect. It all kind of like added up to, yeah, you know, just like very fascinating. Okay. Um, yeah, I probably like forgot some detail there, but um, yeah, it's definitely inspiring, for sure. Were there any other people that were inspiring you in your early days? Um, so when I got into it, there was like, the one that stands out the most is like Malcolm Smith. Okay. Sadly, I haven't heard of him. So he was like a Scottish, uh, from like, he's a Scottish climber, okay. kind of from the era of like Ben Moon and like Jerry Moffat and those guys. Right, right. Um, and he was just like this kind of, one of those like legendary strong climbers. So he did like, I think the second ascent of Hubble, which is like a Ben Moon route, it's kind of, yeah. but like the first 14C or 14D. Sure. Um, and then, so what actually was funny is like, what captured me about Malcolm Smith was he, there's a short film called Splinter. Okay. That's him training on his like Hubble trainer on his, um, like, I don't know, it looks like it's like a 50 or 55, like a really steep okay. indoor board. And that just has these kind of like slow mo. It's only a few minutes long, but it's like him like grabbing this little like undercling and like snatching this hold. And yeah. 
And then there's like this side angle. So it's, again, for someone who in my shoes was like brand new to climbing and you're like, there's nothing on that. There's just this wall. And there's these things like this much sticking yeah. out. And he's just like grabbing it. You're like, what is going on? Like, how, so for sure. That's, that's superhuman. Yeah. And then I remember there's like the Petzl rock trip videos. And there's one of the Tony LaMesh, who now he's like, just like a ski guide or ski mountaineer guide, or I don't know what, but like he did the first ascent of the Mandala sit start. Okay. So there's like a video of him doing that. And it had the close ups of just like these crimps and the way his like wrist was bent. And like, it was, yeah, just like the fascination with what they were doing. So I think there wasn't so much people as there was just like climbing in general. And you start seeing more and more stuff. Yeah. Opening your eyes to more and more things that you want to test yourself against, potentially. Yeah, yeah, where you're just kind of like, how's that possible? Yeah. Um, Definitely. Yeah, I mean, it kind of went, it was like, uh, I mean, this is more, now I've been climbing for a little while, but like, um, obviously like Kevin Jorgensen, there's him doing like the Ambrosia First Ascent in this film, like Progression. And then he kind of went on to like obviously like do like the dawn wall like so that for sure. kind of trajectory was like i thought it was really cool like he's just doing stuff that to me like that was a inspiring way of climbing and then like dave mcleod is someone like it's like always really interests me yeah because he's very like again like cerebral about things i know one of the questions you sent me is about like injuries and i feel like i've had like you know it's like knock on wood i've stay pretty healthy but then when i started thinking it was like probably had like a lot of things that would you describe as like minor injuries like yeah. definitely like a handful of times or like something's kind of like clicked or popped in your knee Ooh. and then you're like that's not good and it's kind of like it's sore and you kind of like something's wrong but you're like, well like Just i'm not I'm, I'm not like crippled yeah like it's clearly not like catastrophic um as climbers we just raise our pain tolerance and move on <laughs> Yeah, and I think I was always, my thought was always like, uh, when something gets injured, I like go like study the anatomy, like what's going on in that joint. So I'm like, and um, I just thought when you looked up like how to like rehab something, or it always seemed like that wasn't very good advice. Yeah. Because it's just like rest it, like don't, like, I'm like, well, that's probably not like the way to go. And then, for sure. Um, well, or, I mean, like, yeah, within reason. <laughs> yeah, for the first maybe 36 yeah. hours, it's good to rest, maybe. But then you're kind of like, okay, it's, you, know, you got to get this thing working again. Yeah. So it's like, what, yeah, it's kind of like, always make sure you have that, like, patience and better judgment, but mm -hmm. you got to get it, like, you have to re-strengthen it, you have to rebuild it, you have to get the mobility yeah. back, you need, like, blood flow for it to heal. So it's kind of always like, if I can kind of study the anatomy and the physiology and then kind of understand okay that's kind of all what's going on in this joint and how it should function this is like what it sounds like happened here so yeah. that can tell me what's like safe or not safe to do and i understand these like training principles of like how to strengthen something or so that i can do that and it's like obviously i'm not like a doctor <laughs> like but I, I always like taking that into my own hands mm -hmm. and yeah it's like Obviously, it's something. There's things you'd have to go to the doctor for. Like it's like this is dislocated. This yeah. is broken. Yeah. And I never had anything like that. It was just like something kind of like tore here in like a minor way. So I can probably like figure out how to deal with this. But yeah, knee stuff, a few bicep things, where again you just feel like that little like feel that little pop or that little like kind of tear. Right. Um, Any fingers? Um. Again, nothing catastrophic. I think like maybe like i can remember like a couple distinct times where it's like you felt this little like click mm. and you're like that was kind of weird and then like a joint click or no a... like you like half like for me it's always like half crimping something oh. and then um always like when it says a couple of times but yeah just kind of like when it was on a moon board pinch and yeah you're kind of like in this half crimp and then you just felt this like kind of like a little shift and like a little click like right kind of like where the pulley is so it's like probably something happened there but then he's like it's not and he's just like okay i'm gonna cautiously like 
feel this out and yeah. you know there's like the kind like you like kind of like feel it and you like try to convince yourself nothing's wrong yeah and then you're like testing and so classic but you know like the worst thing you can do is like make it worse so yeah it's like okay i gotta do something with this to help it like rehab or whatever it needs to do but i gotta be like kind of patient and careful about it but it wasn't like Clearly, it wasn't like a blown pulley or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it wasn't. So basically, as far as like stuff that's like inhibited my climbing, I haven't had anything too major besides like my Achilles tendon. Um, and then heel hooks, I kind of avoid now, just because I know something can go wrong. Yeah. So like, if I can use a toe hook or I can pull with my toe instead, I'll do that. Anything that's like my body part is like like a heel toe cam like finger lock anything like that i'm like nope like there's just a lot of things that i don't like being stuck mm. <laughs> like in anything or yeah, yeah. which is probably why i have never been very i i'm pretty weak at like hard pocket climbing okay because i found like a lot of hard pocket climbing you got a pretty good pocket and terrible feet yeah and it just scares me too like much i'm like the fingers aren't coming out but the feet could go yeah and then like that seems bad to me yeah so there's definitely stuff where it just kind of like the gogi's like that yep yeah, yeah that, that that trout fishing pocket scares me to watch people for sure climb on <laughs> I, I never grab that thing deep oh really like i i grab it probably like half the depth i probably could okay just so like if i something if i like exploded off the wall yeah then that, the hands coming out of the pocket. Right. <laughs> like, aside from, I think when I did a gogi, it's kind of like get yeah. that in there, like finish this thing. But totally. you know, mm. I definitely want to go like a, if at all possible. I don't know. You're just kind of go. Okay, if I use this heel toe cam, I can like probably do this move. But you're like, just you can do it like next year or something, mm. and definitely not hurt yourself. Whereas yeah. you could do it. Maybe you could do it now, but maybe you could like wreck yourself for a bunch of months at least yeah and kind of like just like what at like be more paid like yeah you don't need to do this now it's interesting i've always quite enjoyed the cams i've uh yeah in a lot of the hard climbs i've done there's almost always a cam somewhere and i feel like it makes it a yeah. good almost 10 percent easier oh yeah and, uh, frank's pretty like uh full frank is has a lot of heel toe cams for <laughs> sure yeah, so you, you did you not use a heel toe cam in um, Crowded House? Um, it's like those are some pretty slopey exit holds, and without the cam, it uh, they would make the setup so much harder. I can't remember. I know it's kind of yeah. It, there's like a, I'd have to get back on it. Okay. To remember exactly, it probably was kind of like <laughs> heel toe scumming in there. What I remember about that one is wearing on my other leg. We were right, kind of like flagging. I'm like, is this gonna like snap my leg if yeah. it's in this gap? Yeah, um, yeah. For anyone listening, this climb has, uh, it's called Crowded House because it's got a giant sharp boulder that runs yeah. right in line with the climb. And half of the climb, your leg is in between the sharp boulder and the giant boulder that's above it. So it can feel a bit risky. I think, yeah, you're right. I do remember something where you're kind of like, I remember getting very extended and then relying a lot on that heel. Yeah. And like kind of thinking about that, but I, I think it's possible without the cam, yeah. but I mean, if there's a cam, I'm putting it in. Yeah. I you mean, know, like rail, railways got the heel toe cam. Yeah. Dragon fire, I think, to an extent, did. Yeah, there's quite a few of them if you kind of start going through it. But. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Even like um, pocket full of corpses low, at least the beta I used, I used like a proper, proper cam. Yeah, I did like, well, like I didn't really do that climb properly either. Like my, I did like an unofficial <laughs> start oh, it's, and then, uh, it's whatever. I did something like super reachy. Oh, yeah. I remember like pretty much just like spanning the whole kind of problem doing it. It was like the crux for me was this kind of like drop in yeah, yeah. thing because I got so spanned out, but I could see that. Did you enjoy the kind of dynamic pocket move at the end? Mm. <laughs> it's definitely no, something you would But I, I discovered that if I, went to use it as a two finger pocket. Yeah. Then I could hit it like down pulling. Right. 
and it wasn't as like sharp and painful. Okay. Because remember I went three finger and then you had to go like vertical and you're kind of like stacked and it was super painful. Yeah. I just so, taped up the bottom finger yeah. that rams into that nice little V slot. Yeah. Was, yeah, ultimately I, uh, I think it was like an accident where I kind of like hit it wrong. And then it was like two fingers like down pulling is like, okay, this is the way, <laughs> the way it's like a little harder, but it's yeah. way more comfortable and safe. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. <clears throat> hmm. Well, I wouldn't mind uh, going a little bit further back again to your early days. When you first started climbing, you know, what were the, the max grades out there? Or what were the grades you would have dreamed about? Like in like the world? Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, in the whole world. B15 and 515 were like definitely the things. And I don't remember ever thinking like, I'm going to climb those grades. Um, I think I was more interested in like finding out what was here. Like Marcus's first guide was out. Okay. So it's just like, I don't even know what these grades mean. Yeah. Too. Like you think you're like, oh, I'm in like pretty good shape and like kind of like a strong guy. Like, I don't know. Yeah. It's like V10, maybe I'd try like a V10 and you realize really quickly, like climbing is not like other stuff. Yeah. Like you, like you're not just like, I'm athletic and like. So I'm pretty good right away. You're like, you just like, everyone kind of sucks. <laughs> you're like, oh my God, like the yeah. zero is pretty hard. Oh, sure. um, yeah. That's interesting. Are you saying that you hopped on the V15? Like, well, no, no. I mean, I've never. Oh, so I, I misspoke. I mean, uh, does that mean that you hopped on that V10 like very early in your climbing? After? Yeah. Um, where did I, so I would have gone to Buddha first, I think. Okay. And so, like, yeah, definitely, like, um, you know, red potato and things like that. Like, yeah, you kind of like you're like, okay, like, yeah, like having the guidebook and being like, well, like this is like the like these low single digit B grades must be for like people like these must be really easy or something. Yeah. So it's like I don't know. It's like you have like a grade scale in there at the front. So you're kind of like I don't know, like. V8, V10 kind of seems like like two thirds of the way up. So probably like that's like a good spot to like start. Yeah. Ooh. And then you're just like, how is this even like, you're like, yeah. How, how long had you been climbing at that time? Like maybe like a year or two. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And you're just like hopping on V8s and 10. That's yeah. That's pretty awesome. But like not, not with any like success. Right. Right. Um, but you know, back, I mean, to the original question as far as, like, grade aspirations, I think, like, 514 is just kind of, like, I don't know, for, there must have been several generations of climbers from, like, the, like, 90s to the early 2000s, where it's, like, that just kind of, in sport climbing, that's, like, was, like, a real benchmark. Yeah. Really, like, I want to climb 514. Uh, and then, I think probably, like, V10 was in there, but, I mean, I, I think, like, the... I was, I think I thought like a V15 is like, that's like the cutting edge it was like, that's probably not like where like, that's probably Maybe not, not cards, like or... realistic, Yeah. which I don't know if that's, I don't see that as like self inhibiting. Cause it's like, you always find out later, like, Oh, actually that is like realistic. But, mm -hmm. um, I think that like, you're thinking like that, like V13 and up. That seemed kind of like, okay, like that would mean you're like really, really good. Yeah. You're not like the best in the world, but it's like, so maybe that's like something to aim for that like V, V team grade. Yeah. And then, yeah, it's like, okay, five, it's like five, 15, A, 14, D is like, this is like the cutting edge. And it's like, probably like that, like mid at like 14 B ish is probably something that's like someone who like gets really good and like invests themselves in it. Can, maybe that's like a thing to do. So yeah. I definitely remember like, yeah, like V13 and like kind of like mid 514 or maybe like 14C kind of to me it was like, those are like good aspirations. Okay. Nice. Yeah, those are some some quite good goals. I know some people lowball their potential by being like, oh, life goal V10, or sometimes they highball it. And uh, yeah, it sounds like you approached it very realistically and appropriately. So it's, it's good. Hmm. Yeah. I, 
definitely I don't know what the best way is because like I've had I definitely like jumped on I think like sport climbing I've not been very successful at and like very it makes sense because I haven't approached sport climbing properly yeah. at all um, and in terms of like building up and building a base and like sure. you know I just kind of kept was like I want to do the next thing the next thing and then also I kind of like bouldered up to like the 10 the 11 um, yeah. well real quick though for people listening when you say you weren't very successful I, I know you've done at least uh, 515c uh, have you, yeah have you gone past that as well no so I mean I've definitely I've tr but like I've spent a lot of time on like like um, a few routes like mid to upper 514 yeah but I mean that was like it was just kind of like I, I understood like the if you can boulder this hard you're yeah. not going to find a crux harder than that one so definitely. I was just kind of like ah, I'm going to try these like really hard sport routes and uh not realizing a couple of things i guess like one just like the difference between yeah doing like a v10 boulder in the middle of a route and like having hard climbing before and after that's like yeah you think that obviously like anyone should understand this way different mm -hmm. but i didn't think of it that way and then for sure also not realizing how close something can feel without being close at all right um because there's this route like existence mundane that uh, acid fail mm -hmm. that that's 14b right yeah and i tried it a handful of times like 2012 2013 and kind of like because i was just like i want to basically i was like i want to climb 514 yeah and i don't want to i was like i'm not gonna like a 14a might be a 13d so i'm, yeah. like, I'm just gonna like go to this one and it, sure. in a way it was kind of it suits me really well, okay. which I had no way of knowing. But so the first year I tried it, I did all the moves. Nice. And then the second year I tried it, I did it in like overlapping, like a overlapping one hand. Yeah. I thought this is really close. And then I so 2015 summer, 2016 summer, especially 2015, 2016 I ended up burning out really bad on, but like. 2015, I probably went, I probably spent like 40 to 50 days on it. Whoa. And for some time. there's like, essentially you do some intro climbing, you do a first crux, like a bad shake, then you get to the second crux and there's kind of like, you grab this like side pull crimp, you grab an intermediate crimp, you like go to this jug and then it's like, you're kind of like home free from there. Nice. And so I started like hitting that side pull crimp from the ground yeah. and then falling, going to the intermediate. And I probably fall in there like 50, 75 times. Damn, and that's basically, what that's like one and a half moves from that jug. But that was at that time. So like that was around like 2016. And then I was kind of like, oh man, I'm, I'm tired of this thing. Like yeah. it's driving me nuts. But you felt like I'm like half a move away basically because I'm like getting this intermediate pretty much and it's like you just have to do this one more thing. And then I came back to it a couple of years later. It's like I'll try this again. And um actually hit that position from the ground where it's like, oh I know why I was falling here all the time, and I was never gonna be able to do the route. Because it was like I hit it. And I needed my, I needed to have the shoulder like in mm. and the shoulder was like down. I see, I see. And I just was not like good enough or strong enough. Like I, every time I hit it, I just didn't have it in the tank to like be high in the shoulder. Okay. And that's the difference between like being able to do and never being able to do. And so, yeah, I think like it was like 2017 or 2018. I tried it like a handful more days again at a couple I had, I remember I had one go where I was like, I grabbed the intermediate and like popped off. I was like, what the, like what happened? Like, uh, and I had like super bad like split. Uh, and um, then that was it for that season. It like snowed the next weekend. Gotcha. And then I've never, I mean, I've tried. I went to it a couple days this summer. I've just never, 
that's kind of why my like I have to go do that thing eventually. Yeah. But uh, if you need a bully, let me know. I'd help on it. Yeah, it's still it's like one of those like it's never going to be, it's never going to be easy. Like I'm never going to be able to go to it, and just kind of like relearn the moves and do it. Like it's always going to be a fight, and it's, so it's always going to be something. Like I'm going to have to not just intermittently try it. Like I'm going to have to at some point go back and be like, this is the thing I'm trying to do, yeah, and it's yeah. never. I've never felt that way about it again yet. Um, so I guess my point with the, that whole sidebar was, I've never been sure of like, that thing motivated me so much for so long mm -hmm. that like I tried it before I should have, I wasn't ready, but it showed me I could do it. It made me like super psyched for years and years. And like, I don't know, like did I get more, but ultimately like I haven't done it. And then ultimately, I have no base of sport climbing because I just invested everything in that. Yeah. And then when I got burned out on that, I was like, I just better try something harder. So I started like trying Bunda Devora beside it. That's awesome. And again, like, like this thing feels pretty good. I'm like, yeah. Um, I think that's like a bouldering mindset too. Is like, it was hard for me to stick with routes mm -hmm. once I did all the like once I did like the the sections of it. Yeah. I was kind of like, uh, if this was a boulder, you'd be done. For sure. But now you're kind of like. I'm curious. There's a, uh, a new climb in the Gilfrey called Semantics, put up by yeah. Miles Edison. So it's basically like 25 feet of hard climbing, and then you're on, I think, a couple of jug. You had some jugs, you can rest, and then it's, I think, moderate climbing after. Yeah. <laughs> Being a boulder, does that entice you at all? Where you just gotta get past 25 feet, and then you're Maybe, home free. but what really has changed for me, so it's like people think, and I felt it was funny too, where I went from, I said like, I'm like a really, really poor man's Kevin Jorgensen. Cause I did like the high ball thing. And then right. it was just like, uh, I'm jumping right into like multi-pitch, <laughs> um, which was like last year. I'd never done a multi-pitch before. Okay. And I was like, okay, I think there's a few I wanted to do, but it's cause of the, the aesthetics, like the, the visual of the line has yeah. become like more and more important to me. And there's an American boulder, Chris Schulte, and I was listening to him in some podcast, and he basically said like, how, it's essentially like sport climbing seemed like the weirdest to him, okay. because almost everything about it is like, often kind of like random. It's like you start on the ground, which makes sense, but then, you know, you go to the top of this cliff, which doesn't go anywhere, yeah. but you stop in the middle of this cliff. And a lot of times like the lines, like there's lots of beautiful sport climbs. So something like, um, you know, like just do it in Smith Rock. Yeah. It's like, that'd be like a dream climb for me. Cause it's so visually stunning. Mm -hmm. And you're just like, there's that thing. I'm going to climb that thing. But a lot of like, when I thought back to sport climbs, it was like, what is the sport climb that I've done? That is like, that thing's so beautiful. And I'm like, I wouldn't even see the line if there were the bolts there. Yeah. yeah. So the university wall, I mean, you already, like you hike past that when going to gateway. Yeah. And like, that's like a, that, like that wall is beautiful. I think there's one line there, um, so like smells like Team Fascism or something. It follows yeah. this really obvious diagonal crack, and like that stands out for sure. But um, I just haven't felt like super psyched on it. Like it doesn't mean they're not good. Like obviously, like the yeah. movement, movement's great, but a big boulder. Like so, yeah, the Chris Schulte thing was. He said basically like a boulder, you climb from like the bottom to the top. Like you see, like there's the line. I'm gonna climb that and rep from the bottom to the top. He's like, you know, like, he's like, that's more in common with like mountaineering, like sport climbing. Yeah. Because you look at the mountain, you're like, I'm going to climb that feature to the top. So, you know, these big boulders to me were just like way more motivating because you just see this like stunning face or a rat and you're like, you're going to do this thing. Um, and then you're know, driving these bouldering areas and then you see some of these like line, like multi pitch lines on the mountains, like the, you know, you see the shining when you're driving to Banff and it like lights up and it's just this big orange diamond. Mm. And you're like, I can see that from like 50 kilometers away. Like, Oh man, I want to do that. <laughs> for sure, for sure. W which uh, mountain is the Shining on? Mount Louis. Okay. Interesting. I, I don't think I've heard of that one until you brought it up here. Yeah, that's like a Sunny Trotter line. Okay. Uh, he did that with like Tommy Caldwell. Um, and it's like one of the, like the Alpine, it's like the Sunny's like Alpine trilogy, which is, so there's like Castles in the Sky. Right. And then The Shining, and then Blue Jeans Direct. And those are kind of uh, like three 
I guess they're like three 14A multi pitches. Um, or like he had graded in 14A, but all, like to me, the shining itself is, he did like what this called like the shining uncut, which, so there's kind of like a, he's like linked all these like three crux pitches because there's kind of hanging belays. So it's like a 90 meter pitch. Right. So broken up, it's like, I think like 12 plus, 12 plus, 13 plus. And then like all together, it's 14A and then like blue jeans itself is like 13BC, I think, crux pitch. And then, but the direct is like adds a 14A variation. Okay. Um, so, so anyways, yeah, I mean, that's another like sidebar. But. Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah, let's, why don't we jump back into bouldering yep. and talk about your latest achievement in uh, Bishop. Yep. So you recently come back from Bishop, you sent Spectre yep. B13, and also, am I pronouncing that right? Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, if you don't mind, tell me a bit about that, how it felt to stand on top of this giant boulder. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, that was like a really, uh, that, like, that was like a really meaningful send to me. I can say like, hey, like I didn't suck at this thing. Like really? I invested, you know, my entire like adult life into trying to be good at this thing. Yeah. And then I can be like, like I wasn't not good at it. Like I yeah, did this yeah. thing. So that meant something. Um, but more than that, like that line itself, like Spectre, really, it, it is kind of like a perfect boulder in a way. Cause it's like, it's just like the singular line. So it's yeah. probably like, uh, like 55, at least 50, like 55 or 60 degree roof. Yeah. It has like only the holds you use. Like, and there's like nothing else on Like there's no other lines. Yeah. And then it's really tall, but it's not like a, it's not like danger. Like the high ball isn't like a, there's no like risk isn't like a factor in doing it. Okay. What would you grade the top section now after the, the um, list? After the crux, it's probably like, which you're still at like very, like safe height. You kind of just like, it's always hard to say. I mean, maybe it's like a B6, like you start matched on this rail and like, it's maybe like B6-ish or something. Sure. Um, but it's, it's droppable. I mean, it's, <laughs> like I fell there a couple times. Okay. I think it's more from nerves, honestly, like looking back where, uh, like I had one fall in the session where I sent it, where it's like, I got my hand on this hold. It's like, if I get this hold, I rock onto the slab. I'm in no hands rest. I'm, I'm done. Like I've sent this thing. Yeah. And I kind of just hit it just a little wrong. Like thinking. And uh, Josh Muller, when he did it last year though, he did it, it was like soaking wet. Mm -hmm. Like it was his last day of the trip. Wow. And it was snowing and it just like, the slab was drenched. And he got through the crux and mantle and it's just like, I guess I gotta do this thing now. Like, yeah. Climbing it wet would be very, like, it's crazy. <laughs> but um, that's awesome. It's too bad, uh, or at least I haven't been privy to a video of that. You'd be cool to watch though. Oh, Talk yeah. Talking about he, he, when it's snowing and wet. Yeah, there's a photo, he posted a photo. He didn't have a video, like, he didn't have a video going. Right. I think like, it was just like him and me, and then uh, like Reagan, like Josh's wife, and then Danny was there. Okay. I think, I feel like Reagan and Danny were probably like looking the other way, just like, oh my God. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like stacking pads. And <laughs> But uh, you're a big guy, you can catch him. Yeah, <laughs> but, I mean, you're definitely up there. Like, it, you would, it wouldn't be good to fall from up there. But so for me, I, I've kind of thought of my climbing in terms of. I thought like if I could only do one thing in the style of climbing, what what would that thing be? And then I, I should try to do that. So and I split like kind of like bouldering into like high balls and like hard bouldering. Right. Um. Because it's just like there's a totally like they're totally different they're totally different like games within climbing i think yeah um so as far as like yeah if you made specter harder where it gets tall then it would risk would become harder like there's not really like any you don't you're not dealing with like risk or fear or danger to do it mm -hmm. so it's like the perfect height the perfect line the rock is like impeccable like um and that was the one for me where it's like you know if i did if I climbed every other bowler in the world, like if I, if I climbed Burden of Dreams, yeah, I would still be like, I need to do Spectre. That's and it's like, if I, and I knew, I don't know how I know, like you said, like, how can you know this? But it's just like, and then maybe I think too, like, does this, 
kill your motivation for other stuff, but it, it doesn't. It just feels like, it's like when you said like, why climbing? It's like, I don't know. It just feels like what I want. Mm -hmm. Spectre for me is this thing. It's like, if I climb it, and then the next day, I, something happens that's like, you can never climb again. Yeah. I like, like I, I kind of did the, like, I'm okay with that. Like, I don't feel like unfinished business. Right. So there's like, there's more stuff at that level and like even above that, you know, I tried and like, no, I can do and like want to do. It's like, I don't feel less motivated, but that, that boulder just like represented hard bouldering to me. Yeah. And it's probably part of like a generational thing. Like when I, when I did like, that was one of the harder boulders in the world. When like V13 was still like pretty high up in the grades. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uncommon. When I started climbing, Inspector was like, you know, there's there's many people who think of, like there's many people who said like that might be the best bowler in the world. Wow. But, I mean that's like very subjective, obviously. Yeah. Um, one of the questions was like, why am I not grading things now? Oh yeah. <laughs> and um, basically, it's like I think you know you have this like bell curve in climbing, where I think if you're like maybe like five six to like, you know, six one or six two, okay. you're kind of like in the meat of this like bell curve where. A, most like you probably like anatomically those problems should feel relatively yeah similar. and then it's like but if you're like you know if you're once you get like much shorter than that to like the the low end of five feet or like into like solidly into six feet tall yeah then you start to be like there's things that feel drastically easier or harder and it's like my my experience of certain problems just like is not the same <laughs> as yeah. like other yeah. people's um but you, you don't feel like sharing what it felt like to you because of that? Just some problems in general? Uh, the grading. Um, it's like in terms of grading, like you just proposed that because you're on the upper end of what's anatomically average, that it's going to feel much different for you. But your opinion is still valuable. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we can get to that question later and there's like a lot more to it because that's like not the only reason. But I think sometimes, yeah, it's just like, things do feel like really different to me. Like we did this thing in the, the spring, like uh, on the Apollo Boulder Syzygy. Right. And you know, I did it pretty quick. And then Lo was like, what, how hard do you think? It's like, I don't know, man. It's like, I would, it kind of felt like, I would say like V8. Okay. But I'm like, I know like, it's probably not. Cause it's like, if it's V8, you would have done it like, like that. Yeah. And then, yeah, so anyways, that's like, because it's like a whole other sidebar thing. It's like, yeah. Locally though, I mean, there's nothing wrong with having a Bilsma grade. Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, if people want to know, like, again, of course I know, like, if you're like, what did it feel like to you? I could probably, I'd be like, well, it's something like this. Yeah. So, but uh, like in my short list of like, what are the boulders I would be most proud, I would feel most satisfied doing? It's like Spectre was the one. So that's awesome. Th in, in the same way, like, you know, after I did Ambrosia, that just like, I felt like, okay, like I, the world feels different to me now. Okay. Yeah. What's um, next now then? You've taken the, the best boulder. So there was world. nothing in my mind for like Bishop mm -hmm. until, so last year, Keenan and Takahashi put up this thing called uh, uh, Little Life. Okay. Which, um, so to me, what I kind of started feeling like, it wasn't, it's not just about, like the next grade or something, anymore. it's like, what's in like the culmination of my like climbing experiences, like what's the next step in this like inexperience? Yeah. Um, so it's like, uh, it only, he's the only one who's climbing. So he proposed it at B14 and it's also, it's like a high ball that it's kind of right on that line of like, is it dangerous? Like you, you're kind of like, a, it's at a height where if you go higher than that, like it's clearly like dangerous. Are we talking this, 20 feet, 25 feet? 25 possibly. Okay. Um, so yeah, this like little life problem. It's that same kind of thing. like you're up at the crux and you're just like, you know, this isn't like free soloing. Like you're like, you're not gonna die. Yeah. But it's like unclear, like, 
you don't know what the outcome <laughs> would be. So you're like, you probably don't want to fall. Yeah, yeah. So he yeah. is definitely on the board. And then, so that thing I threw, I, once I saw that, because it's like, it's, I don't know, you get like prominent, the prominence of the boulder like really matters to me a lot too. So this thing's like, it's up on top of like the, the like buttermilk mountain. It's like, or like a mountain, but it's like, it's up on top. You can like see it from like kilometers away. Okay. It's like immaculate, like this wave. Um, and again, it's just like perfect rock quality, no other lines, no other, like you just, it's like the line on this perfect patch. Very crimpy as well, right? The bottom is ridiculous. Like the vision he had for that line, like the, if there wasn't chalk on it, yeah. you wouldn't, like you almost have to have like imagination to like believe that there's like something there. Right. Um, but so yeah, like once I saw that and knew that, it's like, that's the thing I'll look at next and kind of see. So after the inspector this year, I went up there and I threw the rope down and I did what Keenan had described as the crux was like the top crux. Mm. And I actually did that. Like it was like, my, I did it in like two or three tries, nice. um, which is great. But then, yeah, I mean, it's I, the difficulty of the boulder definitely comes from the accumulation because right. you're like death crimping this like heinous like slab crimping to the bottom two thirds. And then you're, you're gonna be tired. Your fingers are gonna be like, probably like weeping kind of like. Would there be any uh, point where you could chalk up at all? Uh, there's kind of like this like uh, hold where you can chalk up and shake up, shake out a little. Okay. But it's like a, it's like a pretty good side pull edge, but like the feet aren't, it's like that, it's like not like a rest. It's That's just like, like you can breathe and you could like chalk up a little, but, and then you have this like really long thing up to like a really sharp guest on and then like a hard shoulder move. Um, so I mean, the difficulty of the line is definitely like the accumulation of all this yeah. stuff and then plus the, and then the accumulation of the stuff to a point where you're like, it's probably a bad idea to fall. <laughs> so sure. anyways, that was just kind of like, I always, I thought like Ambrosia and Spectre were kind of like the culmination of my time in Bishop mm -hmm. and then this other line didn't exist until last year and now it's been done. And I'm kind of like, okay, that's like, you're reintroducing the high wall element and you're kind of taking the next step in difficulty yeah so it's like i'll check that out and then it felt really good so i'm, I'm psyched on that that's awesome and, um, but other stuff i mean like the swarm is again just kind of like super like sharp crimpy like yeah just kind of not at my not at my alley <laughs> what about locally um in terms of like projects or sure what, so, what's 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 the project you're most psyched about locally you think the sunny corner project in France. Okay. Um, which, yeah, I mean, I first tried that in 2000, I don't know if it was 2015 or 2016, I can't remember, but that's something that like since then, minus the year my Achilles was ruptured. So that's like, for sure, like 2016, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 22. So for sure seven year seven years where I've put probably an average of like five days a year into it. Like yeah. Some days more, some some years more, some years less. So right. you know, I forget like what is that? So we're talking like somewhere between like thirty to fifty days. Gotcha. Um and again it's like it's a really strict like you can see it from the highway. Where where it's, kinda is it? It's on the shield bowl. So okay. you've been to the shield? Yep, I've been to the shield. So the shield is, if you're facing a shield, yeah, we're looking you at go it. to your right around the corner. Okay. And then there's a cave to an erect. Right, right. Um, it has like this obvious like start, like loaf, like couldn't be more obvious or clear, like this is the start. Mm -hmm. And you like follow this um, steep climb and then go up this high wall around. Okay. And is this something you personally want to FA and would want to keep to yourself? Yes and no. I mean, yes, to the sense like it would, it would be like the most meaningful first ascent to me. Okay. Um, but it's also, and I, I know that was one of the other questions, like, um, 
as the years go by, it mad like I'm kind of at a point with it now where it's like I've had my chance. Okay. <laughs> And it, was, it wasn't a project I found, like it was shown to me. Yeah. And like I tried it with other people. And there was definitely a time where I was kind of like, I had asked, like, I think there's, uh, you were in that message thread. I think I sent out like, like to a bunch of like the developers and stronger clients, like, can, let's make a list of projects. Like, right, I remember that. And then I mentioned, so there's there's two projects in Frank, there's like, and I said, basically, I was like, I kind of have like a, a selfish reason for wanting to share all this other stuff too, which is like, there are two that I'm like, could you kind of like, maybe leave these like yeah, till the yeah. end of, um, I got you. So. Hmm. But, Does it feel close at all right now? Um, your last one? It's really hard to say. Yeah. There's still one move I've never done. Okay. So the first couple of years, I kind of like had it till I was, conceptually one move away. Like I climbed from the start to this one move that I, could, that I couldn't do. Right. And then probably from after that one move to the top. And then after that to the top wasn't too bad. Yeah. But then realizing like that beta would never be possible. Like you kind of like, it was like, it was a dead end basically. Okay. Um, Just because your body would be in the wrong spot. Um, from doing this one move that you have been So I, I was at like max extension. This was also again, it's like, this is like exclusive to my body. Gotcha. I was like, I could not be more extended. And actually, I don't know what has happened, but I can't physically hold the position anymore. Yeah. Like, and in, a, in the sense that it's like my limbs don't, like something has happened in my body. Okay. Where it's like, I've lost like a half an inch of something somewhere. You've shrunk. Yeah, I don't know, but like, <laughs> it's like weirdly and just like, I can't even, and I remember how like I could grab these hold, like I put on this heel and grab this hold, yeah. standing on some stack pads and kind of get myself on. And I just can't. And it's cause it's like, I mean, it's not like, a, like I've become distinctly more flexible, mm -hmm. like by, by focus, like making a point of that, not for that problem, but just yeah. like in general. So I don't know if something like, has compressed from like, you know, falls or something. Like, right, right. I don't know, but something changed right. anyways. But what I mean, so I'd be at full extension with my hands like out and my feet down. Yeah. And then release, in theory, I would release my feet and use the momentum of the swing to like hit this hold. But it, like, it's just like, it's a non- What's like, this hold that you're throwing to? Is, is it's a good edge, but it's flat. Like it's maybe like a pad and a half. Okay. But, so it was like totally blind. Like you couldn't see it until you're kind of like swung out around this bulge and you'd hit gotcha. this. And this hold here is like a Gaston facing the wrong way. Okay. And then this hold here has like no back pull. Gotcha. So the way now, like I've figured out like a totally different sequence that involves like you get those, or you get these other two holds and you kind of do like a foot cut and hold this swing from a different position. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, you're kind of like, this was like a theoretical move. And then you're kind of like, I don't know how hard that move would be, but it's like, it might not be like possible. Whereas now the new beta I found out, um, it changes where the crux is. And- Does it shift the line at all from side nope. to side? Okay. It's like the same, exact same line you kind of, you basically like, you don't use any different holds or anything. Um, it just, I guess you do use a different hold, but it's like within this, the same line. It's just something that didn't make sense to use, but uh, it's this tiny little like notch. So I have to like stack my fingers. Right. And uh, it's like super painful, super yeah. sharp. It's kind of a nasty one, but, um, so the move where you get this, and then you like do a long move to a, kind of like another edge. Mm -hmm. I have not done that move, but then I've done like, done from there to the top, um, fairly reliably, like once I kind of get back into it. Okay. Um, and then from there, from the start to there is like, not too, not, it's not really part of the overall difficulty, like ultimately. Gotcha. Um, 
so as far as yeah like you said like am i close like i have no way of it's kind of like i have no way of knowing because it's like that one move is just always like like who knows so yeah, yeah. and now it's, i think i think it fits my body really well so i mean maybe someone else finds some some different beta i don't know I, uh, so I was never quite sure. I always thought it was like probably like B13-ish. But now I'm kind of like, there's a small chance that it actually doesn't fit my body that good. And then maybe, I think the easiest it could be is, like maybe it's, each, if, it, if it turns out that it actually doesn't fit me at all, which is hard to believe, but maybe let's just keep that open as a possibility. Sure. Maybe it's just V12 and it's like, cause I know there's like, there's lots of V12s I've seen that's like, that's next to impossible for me. Right. Um, hmm. And, but if it fits my book, like any other, I'm pretty convinced now that I can be like V14. Cause it actually breaks down a lot like Spectre um, in terms of, you have like a little intro couple moves yeah. and then you have this like crux and then you have an outro. Whereas like, so Spectre's kind of like maybe v 6 give or take couple set of moves yeah. then you have this like distinct crux which is probably like v13 then and then you have this kind of like v6's outro okay. whereas this thing is probably like yeah similar v6 v5 to v7 ish kind of intro and then this crux which for me is distinctly harder than the, like the crux of specter yeah um less my style because it's like revolves around a very bad like fingery hold mm. and kind of a high foot um, but then the move is quite big so but to me like yeah that crux feels way harder than spectra crux and then it's probably like the 10-ish after okay so uh, i would like i'm pretty convinced now it's like at least like it you know it's like in that like b14 range for sure um that gets me pretty uh interested <laughs> yeah no I'm, i definitely like i'd be psyched to, I tried. I've asked. Like I've invited a couple people to come work on it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, last season, like I'd be psyched to um, work on it with people. Yeah. Just because, like I said, kind of. So part of my thought too, with like as far as like closing projects or like things like that, is um, I, I had started putting some like pretty solid effort into it, and it was like getting kind of close and at that time it kind of feels like you're like kind of like to be the one who does this yeah of course um and then started like still trying it consistently year by year but it wasn't like the thing i was like just like I, this is my project that i'm going and trying like all the time mm -hmm. so at that point i kind of feel like you're like you know it's been a couple of years you're not you're not working on it like exclusive, like to the exclusion of all other climbs. Right. So at that point, it's kind of like you can't really like reasonably be like, well, "This is my project." Like, yeah. Um, and then I thought too, like you know, there's to say no. Like, there's people. There's, there's like there's a growing circle of people now that it's like it's inhibiting their ability to like progress outside. To say, hey, can you kind of like leave this one for me? Because I thought like you know what. At the time when I started, there wasn't really a, like that many people actively bouldering in our area at that level. So it kind of felt like, well, regardless you know, of whether you're closer or not, they wouldn't have been able to touch it anyways, right? Maybe. Yeah, I guess I just kind of felt like, you know, it's like, so like if Scott has his project, right. like we're kind of at like a similar level. Um, so it's like, if I'm like, oh, he has a problem, like, it, it, would, it would kind of feel like, in, like poaching. Yeah. To like, well, I'm gonna go, go try and do this before him. So, and then the flip is like, yeah, if someone was, did that to like the project I really cared about, it would kind of feel like, come on, man. Um, but then, you know, like um, Josh Mother got more, like started bouldering a little more out here. And then we got like Lucas Uchida was here working at the boulder gym for a while. Like, yeah. And it's like, to say like, well, I really want to do this one. But like that inhibits their 
there's not a lot of like V14 plus projects around. So to be like, don't do this, like that's like interfering with their ability to boulder outside. So I, and I kind of thought of it as like, if, you know, someone found, you know, they're sharing some like, oh, come boulder in here with me. And then they have like something that's like a, you know, V6. Yeah. It's gonna be probably like a V6-ish problem. It's like a really beautiful, like classic, it'll be like a classic problem and they've cleaned it and they've been working on it and it means a lot to them. And then I just go do it. Yeah. That's like, I'm being like, I feel like I'm being the jerk there. Yeah. Um, whereas then on the flip side, if like I go bouldering with Josh and then I tell him like, well, there's nothing really else for you, but don't try this one. And it's like, well, I'm being the jerk by saying no there. So, right. Yeah, it was yeah. a fair perspective, I think. It's definitely got to the point now where it's like, I really want to do that line one day, but it's a, uh, I, I also value seeing anyone do it more than like, yeah, yeah. If I get to do it first, that's like amazing, but I just want to see someone do, do it. Totally. Because it's like this, I think it's like, yeah, it has all the, like it's like, it stands out, it's aesthetic, it's yeah. like super hard, it climbs good, so. It takes all the boxes. Like, I would, again, if we had like, if someone was like, we had a really strong climber come through, like, we like, try this thing, play yeah. it. Maybe, so. Interesting. So, I think I'd asked you um, what was next for you locally, and you had brought up a boulder that is a, is a project right now. So, yeah. do you, do you generally prioritize developing and projecting on, you know, undeveloped boulders before what's already been done? Yeah. Um, Cause there's kind of like the mystery. There's, I definitely, um, and this was like another aspect of like, not grading stuff as much more recently is, I do like the kind of like, there's more like mystery to a first ascent. Yeah. Um, and, and I mean, even then as you like, you see this line, you're like, that might be cool. So you like get a ladder or whatever, depending on the size or like wrap down or whatever, like you yeah. kind of clean it. Or, even when you know, like it's not going to be that hard, it's still kind of like, you don't know until you know. So it's like, Definitely. this is a new thing. You're kind of, you know, like you, you feel like you're like adding something to you kind of. Yeah. yeah. Um, Definitely. It's very fulfilling. So. Um, there's stuff, I guess, like, up to a certain point, it's just like, yeah, it's more enjoyable. Like, I prioritize yeah. putting up a new problem. And then I also know, you know, so Austin Purdy put up something like Propose V14 and Propose V13 and kind of, yeah. I have my projects that I'm really, that I know are also at that level that are not done. Yeah. So that's kind of more enticing to me. I think if he, if someone like put up like a V15 or V16, like it's not even about like whether I think I can do it. It's just like, I would want to like, I'm going to go check that thing out yeah. to see what, like what this level is like. Um, so I feel like, you know, I kind of, the level of like established boulders, if I'm going to have to invest a lot of time into doing one of those versus investing a lot of time into like adding a new line. Yeah. I'm more interested in doing the new line. And uh, so there's kind of also a threshold for me if, you know, if it's something that's like V10 or down, it's like more often than not, I can do that like pretty quick. Yeah. So then it's like, that's kind of like a fun side project. Whereas most stuff that's like V11 and up, like, um, there's a, like I've done, um, not locally, I, I guess like there's a, a few things like I've done, like a few, a couple of like 12s that I've done in like a single session, which then to me, I'd probably think it's like for my body, they probably weren't a 12, but I've done a few things like V11 and up, like maybe a handful that I did really quick, like in a single session. Yeah. But usually that's going to take me, you know, several sessions, especially if it's like now, especially you know, like V12 and up. So if I start thinking like, okay, this is gonna take like five, 10 more days, yeah. then also locally you're starting like, 
especially around here, you're kind of like, that's like a season <laughs> in some ways. Sure. I'm like, do I want to spend my season re trying to repeat this or do I want to spend my season developing something? Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I totally get it. I think like, it's like the this, sweet spot of difficulty. Yeah, yeah. I definitely agree, like developing as well is, def it's more fulfilling. It's yeah. like, it's much more full circle. It's much more, like you're contributing something to the community. Yeah, it's super fulfilling. That being said though, would you ever hop on, let's say, River Monster that, in my opinion, is like a pretty pretty sweet five-star club. Yeah, that's definitely like probably one of the, maybe you say like, what's the best hard boulder in the Rockies? Like, yeah. That's probably the first one that comes to mind. There's, um, there's even like a, an intro to it on the far right side. Yeah, there's a couple ways you could like add a lower start for sure. Yeah. Um, so that was a line. Is that like looking? You? Yeah, I checked it out. Um, it's definitely, so I found a couple things. Um, essentially, the way I would climb it, my beta would almost be, make it like a different line. Uh, and it's like not really, it's, it, my beta is just like so different on it. Because <laughs> um, you kind of do the intro section and then, so Loic and like Josh did it. I, don't really, I think you have this like side pull and then this heel hook. Yeah. And they come into this crimp. For sure. And like, when I get into the, like a stable position, that crimp is like here. Yeah. Like, it's like, I don't even know how to come into it. If that's and the case then, why not just go to the ones above? I don't know if there is a one. I don't Yeah, the, it's like usually you grab that with your right yeah. hand and then I'm pretty sure Lolik either bumped his right hand to the crimps, then hit the lip. Maybe. Yeah. Or he went left to the crimps and then hit yeah. the lip after. Yeah, I think, I think I will have to take a look at it again sometime. But I even think like a, I feel like I'd ask Scott if he, like, Evely, if he had tried it. And mm -hmm. I feel like he mentioned something that basically, like, it was kind of like, almost like, well, you'll find out what I mean when, like, when you go try it. And then I was like, okay, I see what he means here, that, like, this is, like, a really small box to be in. Interesting. And then I found some beta that you get the same side pull, but instead of heel hooking, I kind of, like, backstepped on something else. Okay. And went, like, really big to this, like, slopey thing. And then I basically have to find, like, a stable position to... Do like a little come and move and then i see so no i think that's like that's interesting one of the that line falls exactly into that like thing i was saying where it's kind of like i know how much time i'd have to invest <laughs> to do it <laughs> okay and i'm like i don't want to take that big of a chunk of time and put it into that thing yeah, yeah. so it's like maybe one day down the road or and it, like yeah, it's like that that line is not gonna be something I'm like, hey, I did it in a couple of sessions. It's like I'm gonna have to be like I I, I would have to like prioritize it. Mm. Um, okay. So yeah, no, but it, that's uh like you said, that's like what are the best hard boulders in Alberta? It's like probably that one. Um Yeah. Well, because it's also like you just you can see it. Yeah. Like it's just like you're like, oh where's this cool line? You're like there. <laughs> like you totally. if you're across the river and yeah yeah it's a beautiful height as well the one yep. not too bad it, it definitely takes a lot of boxes yeah for sure i mean lovick also said though siren song um is one of alberta's best as well yeah i so <laughs> my i'm not overly psyched on cathedral <laughs> okay because that train or um i don't like and like I think people will hear this and be like, that's a really stupid reason. But they said like the prominence of the lines really means a lot to me. Yeah. And all these things are buried in the woods. And like, that doesn't make them climb any worse. That yeah. doesn't make them any visually less appealing, but it's like, you can't stand like kilometers away and be like, that's the thing. Like you have to like, you don't see it till you're like standing right yeah. under. And you're like, the holds are like immaculate. Like the yeah. rock is great. Um, there's a climb at talk that would be right up your alley then. You go to the parking lot, sitting right there up on the hill, just staring right back at you. I went, I was so like, steep too. Tack, like went, no, I went to tack one day and just to kind of like, I had like one pad I went to explore. And I, the, the aesthetics, like this, the visuals of the boulders there, yeah. I was like, this is the, this is it, this is the place. And then every single, line that I was like picking out from far away when I got there I was like 
it's blank. <laughs> like, okay, let's go look at like, there's no holes. Or, like, yeah. There's that, and there's that one thing that's like in the slope, and it's just like, it's like free soloing. Like it's the, so huge. Oh, the one that's in the guidebook. So there's like it's... hot hothead is on like the uphill side. Okay. That's... And I think it's like Lil's like tack roof or something. Like, and maybe some guys, maybe you. I don't know. I've been like looking underneath. But yeah, on the uphill side, there's like a couple good V five to V seven things, I think. And then the downhill side is like it's like the evolution boulder, but like over like a like it's just this huge like steep roof. And then it doesn't have like 20 feet of slab after the roof? I think so. Hmm. I have a boulder in mind that sounds similar, but like, I it's, it it's like the biggest boulder there. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like sitting on the slope and you're like, that is terrifying and amazing and yeah. I'm like I even if you bolted I'm like I don't know if there's actually like anything to grab it <laughs> okay, okay. I think um, we're talking about two different things then and then there's something uh there's a really cool slab that's like it almost like Sandra wrote sent me a picture of it and that uh I, I was calling in my head to myself is like the Africa slab because it kind of like it has this patina on it there's like some stuff's broken and yeah like, and uh, I wrapped down that thing and I'll have to go back sometime and like reinvestigate the stuff because sometimes like fresh eyes changes it. Mm -hmm. But I remember wrapping down is basically like I can't envision this being less than like like it's like a five thirteen plus like slab maybe harder. Yeah. And it's like kind of dangerous. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. It's just like well that's not happening. <laughs> like, it's also barely slab. Like when I went and walked right yeah. beside that boulder, like that thing is basically ninety. Yeah. Like it's the landing would need some hefty work too. Yeah. Hmm. There's a lot there for you though. Yeah. Oh, and for everybody. But oh yeah. There's yeah. and like yeah, I'm mean, gonna go back to the cathedral and I kind of so we can maybe dig into this more at some other point, but sure. you had kinda of like Alberta kind of we have all these like V ten ish kind of boulders. Yes, yeah. And then it's like, like the Y ten. So my thought was essentially and then this gets into some more history that we can elaborate on more but like sure. There's been like people climbing V12 slash 13, like that are in Alberta for like at least 20 years. Okay. Like, I mean, like, a, so like when I started climbing, like Lev Pinter, um, who, again, that's someone I kind of like, I don't, I know who Lev is. I've met him. He doesn't know who I am probably. Like, it's not good. But uh, I was so shy when I started. It's like, I know all these people, and I, but it's like, it was so hard for like, I just didn't, I wasn't comfortable like talking to people and it's like, so I feel kind of dumb because it's like, I could have known people better. But anyways, like, I remember like, yeah, that was like the first, that first comp I went to, like Lev was there and I somehow knew it was like, oh, like he had just, he had put up like Bunda de Fora, which is like 14C yeah. in the first grade, it was like 14B. Um, but he had climbed Spectre and the Buttermilker like in like the early 2000s. Okay. Um, and like Seth, um, like he put up like Jabba, um, like Ripe Potato, like pretty much like all the like the hard stuff in those first editions of the guide, like that's probably like Seth put it up. And I think like he had done Mandala. Like I remember like hearing that or reading that somewhere, like I'm pretty sure that's like 90% sure that's like accurate. Um, and then like Josh Muller and Luke Muller, um, I don't know exactly like what kind of they've done in that time, but the level of climber was here for sure. Okay. Um, and I think the bouldering to an extent had been overlooked and the sport climbing kind of like stood out as more of the thing to do. Yeah. Um, and even like there's, you know, probably like the crux is on some of the hardest sport climbs here now are like at a pretty high level like Bunda, Bunda Crux is considered like kind of people kind of sum it up as like it's just like power endurance V13 Crux mm -hmm. um, and yeah it's really like well Lord they, they weren't interested in bouldering or um, I don't know but I think it's like it's the season we have and the, the rock type we have okay. um, that you know, the, the hardest, and the, some other people have been like, well, maybe like you guys aren't at the level yet to like, you don't see these harder lines. 
and I don't believe that because like the hardest line like you know I've looked at like lots of stuff up to like E16 and like Joe's or Bishop or um, Red Rocks and those hard lines are obvious yeah. like you're not like it's they're not like a some like ethereal like where are the holes how's like you're like there's a hold there's a hold yeah. like there's just like it's steep it has a few obvious holes mm -hmm. and there's nothing else for sure and it's like that seems to be like what makes a hard climb so the rock like the limestone we have doesn't really you don't really get steep stuff with holes too much it's often like okay you might get something steep but it's you're using the lip or you're kind of hugging something and then it's often like super like technical and like weird nebulous holds yeah so non-holds yeah and yeah. and which and then ultimately it like uh, becomes really technical and then there's often like a lot of like these really hard climbs too um you know you look at the process v16 but you look at lucid dreaming you look at like uh, uh like pegasus and joe's i'm trying to think what other one but you're not like oh well you could do this or you could do this or you could do this and like it's just kind of like you grab that you put your foot there like so you don't have a lot of you don't have a ton of options it seems like to like tweak out some different beta yeah whereas here there's almost it almost seems like there's always like something like there's different foot options like it's kind of like granite yeah. too i mean you go to squam like you know squamish as like a world-class destination as long as it's been doesn't have a lot of stuff over like e13 you know it has more now it's had like kind of like a resurgence but and like yosemite famously i mean partially for sandbagging reasons and now it has a v16 but yosemite kind of famously people are like there's nothing harder than e12 there but i think it's like that granite it's like you're just like how can you use all these crystals and it's like climbing a feature and it gets super technical and i think it just uh you know we didn't we only really have like 12 month you can't go to this project year round it's like really probably not super steep like you're not doing like a roof climb with obvious holes like well i have a few that would be like yeah that. i mean there's i think we find more yeah. um so i think it was it's largely like the bouldering has just been limited by the kind of like, probably too. yeah and like oh, that's just a thing um <laughs> by yeah just like the like secret society low people have been walking past forever and i don't know if you've touched below but yeah this is it, but that seems like insanely next level with clear holds ready to go the nest roof i think is another example that's one yep yeah um, i think there's quite a few lines that are pretty obvious yeah, yeah. but i mean there's things that have been actually the secret society is kind of interesting because i know like josh told me that like when like, chris sharma was here like way back when yeah and he climbed some stuff like just like sharma did some stuff on that boulder yeah like just like on the way to ask if he just kind of and he's like i don't know exactly what they were but like, that boulder <laughs> definitely been like played around on yeah um and the minute you go below it's like there's a lip on the secret yeah. society boulder once you go like three or four holds below though it becomes like like the level just exponentially seems to get harder especially with the yeah. texture of the rock how slopey all those holds are yeah like, it gets so steep in there too yeah so yeah it could be uh for sure like a line there but i guess yeah so kind of going back to the main thing is i think cathedral that quartzite actually does seem like uh the rock type that you kind of do get these like steeper things with like distinct holds and more distinct yeah. sequences and I, I think that would probably be the place and it's um specifically you're like oh it actually has like a totally different rock type yeah but then that season there is really limiting you know when you first started developing like who who was uh developing at that time as well so like when i would say like i was like really in the thick of it well there's like distinctly kind of like i would say like from what i've seen or heard or read like three generations before me so there's like the like 
the mountaineers and alpine climbers who were bouldering as like practice or training for like climbing mountains. But, um, and then I think like the 80, late 80s, early 90s, or late 80s, like into the 90s, then you have more like your like sport climbing, like hard sport climbing generation where like that was the focus. And, but then they were also doing harder boulders. So it's like, a, like Jason Holt, who again, I don't know, but this is like, um, this was like a guy who was like, kind of like the cutting edge of like North American, like sport climbing, like, a, like a, who like, to my knowledge was like climbing some of the hardest stuff at like Smith Rock and like internationally, like, like 513 plus at least. And like, uh, so the route Jason lives, uh, like the classic route Jason lives at, uh, Lake Louise is like named after him. Okay. Um, and he, he put up the resurrection at Big Rock in like 19, it's like 87 or 88, I think. Okay. Which if you think about, especially the original way it's climbed, yeah. like the original beta, it's like pretty hard V7. Like I think it might even propose that V8, but it's like, mm -hmm. so, you know, V8 in the late eighties is like, not like, that's not trivial for sure. Um, and then yeah, I've heard stories about him, like soloing like success pool on like Hemingway wall, like Grotto yeah. too, like just like, like a bold. That's a 12 A, right? Yeah, but I mean, it's kind of like, you know, there's 12 A's that you're like, uh, that'd be okay to solo because then, like, then there's like 12 A's on Hemingway at Grotto. Yeah, like, uh, slippery, <laughs> yeah. slabby. So it was like, like a bold, skilled, like, this was like a, like you said, like from what I've heard and read, like a extremely like good for any time, but especially their time, like climber. And mm -hmm. then like JD LeBlanc, uh, I think he put up like Tormented Evil okay. at Big Rock. Um, I feel like he told me or maybe I like read something he wrote where he talked about like, then like they would climb, they'd do like finger eliminates, like on the prop. So they'd be like, you can't use your pinky and now you can't like use, um, like just to train because that's what they had. Yeah. And, like yeah. working on versions of Java, like early on. Um, there's a name, it's like Rick or Rich Conover or Canover. I don't know, again, I don't pronounce it, but like, um, it's kind of like a contemporary of those guys that also like, I think did like a lot of hard sport climbing and bouldering like variations. So it's like we had that kind of like mountain climbing generation and then went to this like sport climbing generation and then they're using these like boulders to train. It's like, yeah. so it's kind of big rock. And then it went out from there. Um, and yeah, then that like nineties and late nineties into early two thousands, then I think that's when you had like a, like, like Seth Mason, okay. who from Edmonton, and like Dan Archambault from Edmonton, um, like Simon Villeneuve and Calgary. Um, there's other names too. There's like Darren Tremaine is like someone I don't, don't know, but I mean, you see his name all the time, like in the sport climbing, like this route was bolted by him or FA by him. And I think, uh, like Buddha, I think he kind of like found Buddha and like got it going. I think, uh, big Choss was an area that he either like kind of got things going there, was it like on the kind of ground level of that. Um, Interesting. But... And you would have been developing kind of with a bit of overlap with yourself? No, no, um, this is again, I think like, I, guess I would say I'm like, kind of like in the, yeah, the generation after, so maybe it's like I'm like the fourth wave in right. some way. But, um, definitely. And that probably was the bigger wave yeah. too, because yeah. yeah. So, I mean, there's like Marcus's guide, like the first guidebook, I think it was like 2002 or 2003, something like that. Okay. And then his second edition is like 2007. Um, and then, yeah, that seemed to be kind of like the first bigger, um, like bouldering is a thing now. Yeah. Yeah. And there's also like this 
it's like Dr. Taco or something that they really? used to have like PDF guides for little places. So okay. um, there might have been some stuff on there. I can't remember. But so like, yeah, Marcus kind of like put these guides together. And then, you know, if you look at, I mean, it's, I guess it's easier to go by like area. So I guess if we go like Frank Slide, um, like Kyle, Marco, and Evan Erickson were climbing there like since they were in high school okay which they're like a little bit older than me um so, so I mean, we're still was, talking early 2000s yeah like right around the year 2000 give or take yeah and like i think pretty sure like talking to kyle like he said like when they started going like they weren't naming or grading a lot of stuff just because they seem kind of like evidence of like whether there's some like chalk or like they like someone else was climbing okay so they kind of felt like we don't know I think if I remember the story is like they don't, we don't know what's what exactly, so we don't yeah. want to like step on toes. And he also had like crazy stories about them like they didn't have like pads, but they they had this like big gym foam thing, so they had to like carry it like above like team carry it like above their heads on yeah. the slide. That's awesome. But um, so they them and some like another Lethbridge crew did lots of stuff down there. Um, and like Evan put up like Nintendo 69 uh, and then Fender like he put up lots of stuff but like Nintendo 69 I kind of point out because this like scene is kind of like a benchmark like V9-ish now okay but he created like V6 when they the yeah. original because they said like they went to Squamish and climbed like the hardest things they climbed were, like V5 yeah and then they came they like well this thing's harder so I guess that's like V6 yeah so it's kind of like you didn't really know I think maybe it was like Trent was telling me one time where in his earlier days like they were grading stuff kind of by comparing it to pictures and like they see like in a magazine a picture and it's like this like is a v8 so they're like well this is like kind of like this steep like yeah because there's like you didn't really have any other base of comparison <laughs> like so, uh, but anyway so like, yeah like evan and kyle and there's like other lethbridge people with them and so they're doing all this stuff and frank um i think kyle had said like there's some sort of, like he had like a notebook or something with a few hundred problems, like maybe like three, four hundred problems, maybe a little more. And his like truck and like either the truck got stolen or got broken into, but it's like, it was just gone. Uh, and, kind of, and it was like, oh, that's a lot of work to like redo. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's crazy. Like, so Kyle is like, I always like, like the like dark horse, the people that just kind of do their own thing. And like, it's like Tim Doyle. Yeah. Like, Griffin Whiteside and like James Litz, like all like these people have just like been some of the best climbers in the world and kind of just like don't do anything. Yeah, at least they don't advertise it. Yeah, it's like, yeah. but if you know, you know kind of thing. And like for Kyle, I always like, I really admire his like attitude with like, there's so many things we've probably like climbed and named this and graded that that he climbed before and he doesn't like say anything. He's just kind of like, whatever. <laughs> like, yeah. He just, and then like he'll just like yeah he's out there doing this thing that's always like super cool um and then you know, like so like road run like i think like lev put up like road runner excavation company um and then like so cartel was like one of like the harder problems and like so like seth had put up cartel i believe Okay. And then, so it's like Seth's kind of the name that's like if you go like all through the Rockies, like the earliest harp, like Frank, Buddha, like Hey Sailor at Big Choss was him, like Right Potato was him, like uh, the hard stuff at the Love Den and Jasper was him, okay. like Jabba was him, Mon Cal he did, like him and Simon, I think him and Simon like went and like kind of like teamed up to like figure out Mon Cal and then like so sure. like Seth did the Mason or uh, Seth did it and then Simon did it right away. So that's awesome. Those are kind of like the early years of Frank. Um, I don't know who did Little Hulkamania. And then uh, Adam Curry is a name that's like he doesn't get enough like credit. It's <laughs> like for sure. It's like the wrong time or something like where he kind of came in and not like is like the like maybe around like the like. 2010 give or take that kind of like mid because like he did like shamu yeah 
to like the where you're like standing above the thing and just like I like think he said he's like you only have like a couple pads and he's like okay well if I go farther like that like I'm just gonna jump on so it's like he yeah. did the thing and now it has like a new name <laughs> whatever it's like he did that he did like dark age a mushroom boulder core shot as well up in prairie yeah but just like he was like bouldering it was just like in this gap where it's like this like guidebooks had been made yeah and then this like new wave of development had started and he like repeated pretty much everything hard and put up other hard stuff but it was like i guess like he didn't document it okay. really and then no one else was documenting stuff and like <laughs> so it's like he just someone who like needs like way more i think credit for like the bouldering he did which was right. like the best of the, like at the time like yeah yeah um he did some like stuff to some versions of like railway it sounded like maybe some stuff like broke i wasn't quite totally sure he did like Commodore 64 tomb raider um he did, like pretty much everything at buddha in terms of like repeating it yeah um yeah he just like tons of like really impressive bouldering and it just like wasn't captured <laughs> for some reason yeah, yeah um he was working on a version of crowded house i think like a like yeah all sorts of good like really cool stuff um yeah it's great hearing about all this yeah i, I think 99 percent of it uh, is all fresh to yeah me, and it really paints a picture of just how much time and effort has gone into alberta bouldering long before yeah yeah um, and, and i guess it's kind of like again it's yeah, like the documenting is important and the stories are important yeah. uh so yeah that's like we started like kind of frank there we had, yeah like kyle and evan and lesbian people there's something going on before that but maybe trent knows more i don't really know but i mean trent was like after all this as well but he's just kind of dug into stuff i think in the process of like trying to like get more into like making a guide for the area or whatever okay um and then there's like yeah like the some like that, like kind of like lead and i think maybe like scott milton like kevin wilson i'm not sure what he did in frank exact exactly but like he probably met kevin at buddha maybe or um, i might have yeah but uh yeah i think like kevin um put up some of the harder stuff at buddha or like contributed with that like he put up like dodge this and like yarkovsky right um and yeah he's like like all like he'll just uh just ask him for a story. It'll yeah. Like a long, crazy story. Totally. Totally. <laughs> uh, it's all sorts of like, like very interesting and entertaining. I was like <laughs> listening to that stuff. Yeah. Um, so then you go like, okay, then there's like Skyline, which... At, at this point in time though, have you started developing as well? Like, so I would say like 2013 was kind of like, I don't know. So, I don't know when I did the Hermit at Buddha, and I don't, I, and I think, like, I'm pretty sure, to, to the best of anyone's knowledge, that was an FA. Okay. I actually don't know of anyone who's repeated it. <laughs> um, if anyone has, yeah. Zach has, okay, it does everything. Yeah, and it's actually kind of cool, because it's like, it's like a slab, sort of, and it tops out, or like it tops on this ledge and down climb this corner thing. Like, do you know which one it is? I don't know. So it's kind of like up at the top of Buddha where there's like Dave's problem is like a V3. Okay. And you start on that, but instead of like traversing out, to, you kind of go straight up this like bulgy slab thing. Mm -hmm. There's like a few hidden crimps. It's a really good climb. It's kind of eliminating, but not, I mean, it's like Buddha style eliminate. So where you're kind of like, there's some jugs out here. And there's some yeah. jugs out here. And you're like, you just go between them. Right. Um, and then you, it makes sense, like you don't feel like you're doing an eliminate when you climb it. But that was, I, th I think that was 2011, but I really don't remember. I just remember like that was kind of my two first projects, like Mon Cal had been established as like, I wanted to do that. And I remember like getting, like I'd get up at like three in the morning in Red Deer so I could like get there. Yeah. At like the like break of dawn and like work on it like the best, what felt like the best conditions yeah. was, like, doing that and also like the hermit that blew to the same thing kind of like getting up like super early like two or three in the morning like getting out there and like hiking in the, like the dark <laughs> so that i could get like the friction totally. I, the, those were kind of at around the same time 
And then, the, so the Hermit is like one of the first things I remember being like, I, this was listed as a project. And it, so it's, it's, it's not a named and graded thing. So it, it felt like a first ascent. Yeah. Um, maybe it is, maybe it is. And then also, was that like quite a good experience for you? Yeah. Yeah. But it was almost more even like, it still felt so early on, it felt just more like the experience was the, the, the investment of like the projecting process. Mm -hmm. And then the doing a first ascent was more like a cherry on top kind of thing, but it wasn't like the, I don't remember thinking about it so much. It's like, I want to get a first ascent. It was just like, there's a thing here to do. Yeah. Um, Something like I'm sure. Oh, Occam's Razor. So that's on like the Pampanga, the flat first part of Buddha. Okay. Where there's like the V2 kind of warm up thing, and then there's like the V5, the tri star thing. And I remember there's, there's like a blank patch of rock, and there's like this little crimp. I was like, you could totally like get that crimp, and there's like a side pull up above it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it, that was the first thing that was like, that wasn't identified as like a project. Like it was just like, I like in, so, like I kind of like saw a line, right? So that was the first thing I felt like is kind of like, well, like I envisioned this thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that I think that was still probably like 2011. It's kind of like 2001, 2012. I kind of like I don't remember exactly what was going. On. Like I, I wasn't really like developing stuff, but that's when I think it was like sport climbing more, bouldering a little. Okay. I honestly, like, I don't know, that feels like lost to my memory. <laughs> right. But it, 2014 stands out, because that was the spring, went to Frank, we started going to Frank. Because I saw like Trent and Mark on Sendage, yeah. like there was like stuff coming up in Frank. And then like 2013, I'd basically done everything at Buddha that I was like aware of. Like I'd done the Go GP. Um, I didn't know about Yarkovs, I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah. So like everything I was aware of at Buddha, I'd done. That's interesting. So you, you everything, almost, <laughs> sorry, I was just gonna say, so you, you almost climbed for 10 years before you started developing. Yeah, and it makes me feel stupid too, like <laughs> in the sense of um, how little I ever even thought about that. Like, you know, I know like the climbs just don't exist, but I didn't really put any thought into like, it's actually like people's time and effort to like make the climbs exist. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. like someone had to like imagine or see the line and then if it, like if it was a sport climb, they had to like wrap down and clean it and put yeah. the bolts. Like, yeah, it just didn't occur to me like the whole process of it. Okay. Um, and yes, because 2013 was like, yeah, kind of cleaning up Buddha, cleaning up Big Rock for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, 2014, the first part of that year, we went and kind of cleaned out uh, Big Choss, to, again, to the, to the extent of basically what was known, besides like, I, I didn't know really, like I'd never gone to the Shamu Boulder, so I didn't really know anything about that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we, there's even like really obscure stuff, like it's been like random stuff, like, uh, like the ice fields parkway like a like kitchener slide and stuff but that was you know like going to like when i went to jasper i never found the love i've never actually been to the love den I've been to tonquin but like i would just go there in the spring and like i remember just like post holing through the like i had pictures of myself like knee deep in snow and yeah. i just find like a random boulder in the woods and just like climb it like i don't know like this is just fun for sure um then some stuff like that around yeah, so like Kitchener slide and randomly like stuff I could see like driving up to Jasper. There's like the erratic at Rocky Mountain House, which I think in the new guidebook they call it like Little Rock or something. Okay. But that was like 40 minutes from Red Deer. So we, we drive there after work yeah. and just like kind of climb all the lines. And then, then you're like, okay, now you're going to do all these, but you can't use this like slab for your feet. Or you can't, they're going to just start making eliminates and eliminates and eliminates. So like we climbed like a million problems. Yeah on that thing, and that was like super fun. Um, so if you don't mind injecting a quick question here. Um, so part of the reason why I assumed you stayed in Alberta as a climber versus going to Squamish was the development side of things. But if you didn't start developing, let's say until nine, 10 years into yeah. it, 
What, what did stop you from going from Alberta to Squam, where there would have been way more climbs? I was just happy here. <laughs> like, yeah. like, There's nothing I, wrong with just yeah. being happy here. And sure. I was just like happy with the life I had. Like yeah. the, the balance was good. Yeah, I didn't stick around because of the development potential. I didn't know that. Okay. But then like in retrospect, like, yeah, I got way more out of staying here yeah. and being able to do it. it. It blows my mind when I think of like, it's like kind of like why, like how how could this happen to me? Yeah. That like, the, it's just like the time, the place, the people, like how is it possible that this like, I just like kind of like get, end up in like Frank when it's just like right for the picking. For sure. There's the people there that are like willing to like show me these things. Like the opportunities there, the psych is there, the like timing in my life where it's like I could, you know, I had a stable job and I could afford to like do the traveling back and forth. And like, it's just like the, like the serendipity of, it's like, I, I'm like, how, yeah. how many people get to do that? Like, I think like I had written kind of in my like, the Frank thing I wrote one time basically like, I, I did try to like tell myself that all the time where you're like, this is like, this is like the good times. <laughs> like, for sure. don't like you don't want to be like, yeah, down the road and be like, not have made sure you were appreciating this when it was happening. Yeah, and uh, so climbing a lot of things that were, you know, th this is listed as a project, so let's let's do that. So like, this is like, there's nothing documented for this section of rock, so let's climb that. Right. So, and then Trent and Mark, his name started popping up on like new stuff in Frank's slide. And then I stumbled, I found Trent's blog and Trent had posted about like, here's like a list of projects in Frank. Okay. Uh, so then I emailed him and basically said like, hey, like I'd be like super psyched to like check some of these things out. Like, would you mind showing me around? And so then um, the 2014 summer, like July, I kind of just like camped in that like highway side camp yeah. I think like, just like lived there that's awesome for that month and then uh climbed like mo like again kind of like climbed most of the established like stuff that I knew about uh, like what kind of numbers are we talking like a couple hundred problems or a hundred mm, I don't really know okay um yeah I, I mean I, I couldn't I couldn't say but it was, like, I remember, uh, we kind of did like a test trip there and sometime in the, maybe like April or, or April or May or something. And the aftermath boulder seemed to be like the new thing. Okay. So, and Trent had put out some like little mini guides. So we went there and then kind of like ran into Kyle and uh, so climbed most of the stuff on the aftermath boulder existing, I think did like cartel and uh, And then it was kind of like, okay, like I'm kind of sold on this area as like probably being like a, a, a thing that, a place that will yield a lot. Yeah. So then that summer, um, yeah, they're kind of like, well, I want to do railway and uh, Nintendo 69. Like those are kind of like, you want to do kind of like the test piece problems. Yeah. So we did a lot of that stuff. And then Trent and Kyle kind of showed me like the shield project and I mean, lots of stuff. Uh, then also that summer, just like wandering the slide, like everywhere, um, not across the river, but like everywhere on the south side, like everywhere on the north side, just like yeah. kind of like finding everything you could. And then I don't really remember how everything kind of like unfold. Like I definitely lost track of like which years were which things and like the exact totally. like, sequence of events. Like I don't remember, like Dragonfire existed then. I remember doing, like doing Dragonfire. Okay. Um, I didn't know that problem was was that old. Yeah, and I don't know who put it up. It was like that's when, like another one. It's like kind of like who did that thing? So I don't think Kyle or Evan put it up. Hmm. And it, I don't. It wasn't Adam. Like Adam did the like Dark Age, but that boulder's changed so much too. So I think Kyle Kyle and Evan said when they first found that boulder. There's like a finger crack project like up where so there's like dragonfire yeah. and like where the dark where dark age exits 
that overhang, that black overhang, there was like a finger crack. And then they went back sometimes, it was like, they found it in like the fall or whatever, and then they went back in the spring and were like looking for this finger crack problem. Mm -hmm. They're like, where are we? Like, we can't find it. And then realized yeah. like this face had collapsed. Right. Um, and then Dragonfire itself, like, the, there's like a in cut edge and like the top part of that pinch, like those holes broke off. Mm -hmm. And then Dark Age, it's kind of weird. And I feel like it kind of sucks because, and this boulder to me is like the example of like why should we clean things properly? Yeah. Because fortunately, all these problems continue to exist and at basically the same level they were, but they like, 80% of the original Dark Age holes are gone. <laughs> like half of the original Dragonfire holes are gone. Yeah. Um, Do you think that makes Dragonfire better or, or worse mm -hmm. at all or equal? Equal. Okay. Um, Cause they get, yeah, when I climbed, if I did Dark Age or uh, Dragonfire and then in the process of like working Dark Age, some of those key holds came off and then figure out like, okay there's like still a sequence that works and then dark age this it had a perfect start like there's this kind of like jugger hill thing yeah and uh, that whole thing came off so now like the dark age started kind of like why does it start here they're like well this is like the closest to like where, where the start was because you just like sat down in this at the bottom of this pit and there's a jug right um so then when i did dark age it had that jug rail still but then some of the key holds or what had been key holds on Dragonfire were gone. Then I did Dark Age Low. The in the Black Cave, there was like a few edges you could use okay. for the. So when you got to the jug from Dragonfire, you, there's some edges you could use to like getting the lip, um, and then those broke off. And then we kind of almost had like a. When I started working Quantum Leap, basically, I think at some point we kind of just. Someone said, like, just clean it. Like, just go clean that boulder the best you can so that it stops changing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, so yeah, it's like, luckily, so the, there's some, like, edges in the steep part that were gone. There were some holds on Dragonfire that were gone. There's a big, there's a jug rail that's gone. And yeah, those were kind of like, that was a boulder I kind of sieged early on. Um, the City of Giants has like the most problems of like any, I think it has like the most problems of any area in France now. And there's like essentially no problems. So is that the one with Vicious and Dragonfire on it? Or which one? No, that's in Heart of Frank. So um, City of Giants is like, there's like a couple little like undulating valleys over. But it's, 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 it's where the shield is. The shield's in City of oh, Giants. Oh, okay, okay. So, and that, 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 that like city of giants, like valley is kind of like, that's where like all like the biggest, steepest, coolest stuff is. That's like right. atypical Frank slide where you, that was like, you're trying to convince people to come to Frank slide and they're like, nah, like the boulders are small. There's nothing like steep. Like you're like, there it is, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like I totally, like, I don't remember, like, I know like railway I wanted to do and I did that that first summer. The shield was like, really, I did that that first summer. Some of the split boulder problems. And then at that time too, so like Kyle's putting stuff up, Trent was putting stuff up, Mark was putting stuff up. There's this guy from Fernie Morgan done it. Like he put up cognitive dissonance mm -hmm. and uh, the, the left version of the split boulder problems. Like he's like a really fun guy to climb with, like, uh, like a strong climber. I think he had like the first repeat of Renaissance. Uh, Evan Erickson, uh, I think he, we were both working split left and we kind of met and then he showed me like the Renaissance project and then like the baby Jesus boulder where they've done the baby Jesus dino and then some other stuff. Um, Dan obviously like put up tons of stuff. Uh, I feel like I'm forgetting some people, but yeah, there's definitely that I kind of like 2014 to 2016 was like a handful of people that like everyone kind of knew everyone. Yeah. And um, but you guys camp together? And... Not really. We're all because like I was like a... 
such an early bird, like bird like i was like so obsessive about like getting out there like at the break of dawn and, like yeah so it's kind of like when i was like when i was done and other people were like showing up that's hilarious um did you ever name any boulders like early bird or something no <laughs> i'm gonna do that yeah like uh <laughs> just for you <laughs> but yeah that was you know i was kind of crossing paths and then i mean i always look back at that and kind of like i wish i'd been a little bit more you kind of like wanted to just climb everything and the way we're developing or like i shouldn't say the way i was like looking at a boulder was like these are all the possible like it's just like can this thing be climbed yeah how can it be climbed this way this way this way this way so like just do all of it it's just kind yeah. of like and then on to the next, and it was like very systematic mm -hmm. like that. And it, it uh, feels like there's just like a youthful, like enthusiasm that then kind of, you're a little bit naive and a little bit like ignorant to what you're doing. Like you don't, and it's like, man, like you started just climbing stuff that it's like, it was just like a throwaway problem for you. Yeah. And for someone else, it could have been like a meaningful first ascent. And then I think probably like uh i think like king cobra i feel like that was something uh i think i like misunderstood like i thought i kind of like got the go like yeah like you should try this thing and then i did i think like that was something i probably like shouldn't have done but i misunderstood and like was that a climb that was being worked on by somebody else i think so or like maybe like trent had cleaned it and kind of I, see. I thought he had, I don't know if this is true or not, but anyways, like in, yeah, like in retrospect, I feel like, uh, I never like maliciously or like, it was like, I'm going to get this before this person, but I was very like hungry to just do everything. Yeah. And, uh, that led to like doing, you know, He's putting up a lot of problems. It's like, this wasn't like, this isn't like, this shouldn't be a problem. This isn't like good. <laughs> or like, you know, someone else, you know, the way we're, I've been like doing stuff more now is like, just like looking for like a specific line. And like, that's the line. And there's like, maybe there's other stuff that could be done. But it's like, I don't, those don't like speak to me. Mm -hmm. Whereas before it's just like, it doesn't matter. Like if it, if it can be a climb, it will be a climb. Right. <laughs> Mm. Again, it's like, I don't know if that's right or wrong, and it's like, but... No, I mean, it just sounds like you're excited about it. Yeah. For sure. And like, kind of... I wonder, and I feel like probably, like... Like... Trent or those guys, like, I have no idea, like, I, I don't want to, like, speak to them, but I wonder if, like... Sometimes I'm like, man, I, I think they were probably like very like patient and tolerant <laughs> of me because I was probably like a pain in the ass. Like you have this like overflowing like enthusiasm. It's kind of like spilling and making a mess that you're not aware of. Right. Where I was just so eager to like put information out. And I asked Trent, is like, is it okay if I put stuff on 27 crags? And he was cool with that. And I, I keep I keep forgetting to mention Dan, but like Dan helped, Dan did a ton of documenting too okay and also like he's like man i spent so many days with that guy and like the law like he's like the most loyal like psyched like climbing partner like ever where you'd be like oh like do you want to go climbing and he'd be like oh yeah and he'd be like not even fine like you haven't even said like where or what yeah like, we have to cross like a river and learn a secret code and fight like a drag like yeah. you didn't you just like i'll do anything and uh that is the best and, like yeah so he is like is all like so much with dan and he did like so much work with developing him go to some other areas too like kudu creek kind of where he brought some information back we can talk about that later um like i said it's like i i know i knew what it felt like to be the climber who's like i'm kind of like running out of i don't know what to do and I, oh, there's more stuff here. And then like, is it okay if we document this? And it felt like it was really hard to communicate about Frank. So putting out picture topos was good because mm. describing didn't work, but I could show a picture and they'd be like, yeah, that's this thing or no, that's a new thing. So right. we kind of know, um, but then not thinking at all of, um, 
it, he said it wasn't like malicious. It was just like kind of naive and ignorant of like not thinking of like what what experience do other people want? Like not really thinking like we're developing this place together. Yeah. But it's like we're all developing it and like not really thinking about like you know every experience I take is an experience someone else isn't getting. Mm -hmm. Like if I do this first, no one else can have that FA experience. So. Yeah, I don't like. I don't know if it. I did anything I shouldn't have. I don't know if I, if I like stepped on any toes or. But it's very conceivable that I did, and it's like I never. I wasn't like, I wasn't even like thinking about it. Mm. So at least I didn't like. If I could go back, it's like I wish I would have like thought about it a little more. Like pick pick my lines a little more carefully. But it's like we were, like Mark of the Beast, like. Trent had cleaned it and like Trent wanted some like time to do it and like so we didn't touch it and then one day he's like ah so when you guys better do it yeah and then we did so it's like you're never um yeah there's like never any kind of like getting there before this person or like I know they want to do that but I'm going to do it anyways kind of like it, it wasn't conscious or known but you know it's all those guys were like very like gracious and like open and like sharing stuff and then it's like in return i probably should have been like a little like slowed my roll down a little bit that's fair so who knows like you, know, you, said, you said it's just like youthful exuberance totally and then yeah i mean it's definitely i think in the overarching scheme of things probably helped the climate community i mean you've put up so many uh you know based on frank that the people now get to climb. Yeah. That's like, it's, I mean, you know, that's like, if you put something up and then other people like climb it and like really, like, it becomes a classic, like that's yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. I don't think a lot of my stuff has become like classic, no. though, which is kind of funny. What's the best one you think you've ever made or, or put up? Um, from a person, like, so ever? Um, sure. The first one that comes to mind was kind of like recent too. There's this thing I'm, I did at Mummery, which I called Still Life, which is like this big, like kind of blunt or rip thing. Where is Mummery? So it's up at like Golden. So it's like, okay. you drive to Golden, a little past, and then you like go up this like logging road for like an hour. Okay. And uh, it's like, it's actually road. fairly accessible. Like you kind of need a good vehicle. And then I think for a few years, like the road had washed out and wasn't maintained. And then, then they started some more logging or something back there and the road kind of got rebuilt. And okay. like Marcus had put it in the back of the second edition guidebook and kind of mentioned like their stuff out there. Mm. And it, it's like, it's unbelievable. You're like, you're in this like rainforest and then you come out and there's just like this huge glacier and there's water. It sounds like there's airplanes like flying, like right. landing because the waterfalls are so loud. There's like just like big ferns and all these like enormous like unbelievable boulders like you hike through this like kind of this, like old growth like cedar forest yeah and there's like boulders like popping out from the top of these like tree like wow but a lot of them are like really blank um so when i first the first couple days there i thought like this is going to be like this is going to have like a million problems and then you're kind of like okay like there's a lot of the stuff just isn't going to go probably yeah, yeah. and um but yeah, there's a, there's a red, it's called, they called it still life. And it's just like this big leaning, like high wall of reds. And it's like really techy and then like pretty committing. I think the only flaw it has is there's one jug up top. That's like, I mean, I, I like hung on the pry bar yeah. and I climbed it and it's like, it just still looks kind of like sketchy and you're definitely like committing. You're like, I'm putting my like faith in this hold that I don't have like a hundred percent confidence in, but yeah. it is what it is. But like, and I mean, it's not a pretty good, I mean, it's probably like V6 to V8, something in there. So it's not like this, like, typically hard problem, but it's like, so it's like techie, it's committing. And that's also kind of goes into the gray thing too, which is you start, I start to like find more and more that there's a lot, the gray doesn't communicate a lot about like the actual like achievement of like the climb. Um, Cause it's like you hit, 
you just take like let's say like d5 so like this kind of like maybe like a like a 512 or d5 like crux and it's like okay we'll put that on a low ball boulder right beside the road mm. and then we'll make one like a friction slab and one like a overhanging like in cut like edges yeah you know like oh, they're kind of like whatever like and but now it's like okay they're still row side but one's a friction slab v5 one's this like kind of crimpy v5 but now we're going to put them like high walls that are like r or x rated and suddenly the, the friction slab is like a much more impressive ascent yeah yeah and then now it's like okay let's take that one and instead of being roadside now it's like you know a two or three hour like hike in so now it's like it's more remote you don't have like you're not going to have enough pads now that's even more impressive mm. and then now let's like put it like let's put that crux instead of on like a high ball let's make it an r or like an r or x rated thing on like a like the fifth pitch of like a big wall and then, then now let's put that in like a remote country and now let's put that high up like yeah, yeah. you kind of like i never appreciated that and i started climbing that i'd see something in the media as like someone did like a 512 in the like somewhere in like the Himalaya or something and you're like 512 like you're like yeah but it's like they're climbing in like winter gear and it's yeah. like minus 20 and the winds whip in and they're like in the middle of nowhere and it took them like a week to hike in like yeah so yeah kind of thinking more about yeah this like this thing where you're kind of like you need a lot of pads and you're kind of out in the middle of nowhere and it's it's gorgeous and it's just like isn't that um isn't that side of the grade kind of covered by the rating because generally when you grade something there's also a rating that's beside it yeah like i i always think i wish there was a better way you could invent one yeah but it's like you always get to like there's always like that where the grades meet there's always like some sort of like overlap where people are gonna be like is it this or this and like yeah it probably doesn't like i'm not against like <laughs> like grading or just like in the recent years are kind of like i don't know like it's i kind of want the line to speak for itself right and if uh it, it's almost if you're not grading something you're almost giving people a first ascent experience it does because, keep more of it because you're kind of like who knows? yeah all you have to go off of now is kind of like does it look cool to me do i want to check it out yeah. i think grades can be really limiting both way like uh where people they won't do something because they're kind of like I'm not interested in it's not high enough of a grade or but or then people will be like oh that's like way too hard for me kind of like yeah. I think people would be surprised like they could if you told them something like let's say someone's like a v5 climber and like here's a v8 and you just tell them it's a v5 yeah then like you know they might do really well on it and then be surprised and at the same time like uh you know you could have something that's like not their style or i was thinking about that like you try like some v9 and it's just like totally shutting you down you're like just tell like what if this was how hard would you try if this was a v14 yeah like if you're like if i do this thing i can be like i climbed v14 you would try so freaking hard for sure but you're like this v9 sucks because <laughs> like, <laughs> i can't do it yeah so yeah. Uh, I get that. You know, again, it's one of those things like there's a lot of benefits to grades, there's a lot of benefits to not having a grade. I thought so. Could you have like it's like beginner, intermediate, advanced, like extreme or expert or something? And then yeah. we half joked about giving e grades <laughs> to these things because it's like that, you know, the e grade system? <laughs> Barely. It's basically right. like it's using like track climbs in like Britain mm -hmm. and it just kind of captures like. If you had like a people associate with track climbing, but it's actually like so there's bolted climbs that have e grades. Okay. So, but it's just like the grade can go up. There's kind of like the if it's like safe, scary, like injury, death, like it kind of it can gain like a few grades. So you can have a high e grade without having high difficulty if the danger is high enough. Yeah. And then you can have very high difficulty with a low E grade if it's very safe. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you kind of like so like Indian face is like was one of the maybe the first E9, but it's like notorious 
it's like one of the most like impressive like Travisons still. Mm. And um, it's E9, but it's like uh, it's like 512V kind of, but you like it's just like you will be dead. Yeah. And then you also factor in super long, so there's like you climb for a long time, like you're dealing with the mental aspect for a long, long time. Um, but then, so that's like E9, but if you had like a 12D that was like bolted and totally safe, I don't know what it exactly would be, but E1. <laughs> I don't think that I don't think it could get that low, but I think it'd still be like maybe like E six or something, mm -hmm. maybe. Um, there's scales you can find for it, where it's basically you just have like there's an E grade, there's kind of like a bracket, and then it's like death fall to safe, and you yeah. kind of like find some wiggle room in there. So we kind of thought it'd be kind of funny, <laughs> like because you'd be like you'd be like oh this if you saw like oh this is like E eight. Yeah. And it's like a low ball that you know it's like, okay, it's pretty hard. Whereas if you, uh, yeah, it's like something that's like really tall. Like you have this high ball that's obviously kind of dangerous. And then it would give it, it would be a way of kind of grading, giving some information without grading yeah. exactly. Um, but even that doesn't, that's another thing. Like a lot of the lines are high balls. And I think the grades are very misleading for high balls. Because you said before, there's kind of like, you know, you get a V0 friction slab in no fall zone, which is like way worse than like a V6, like pocket, like good pockets in yeah. no fall zone. Like this, yeah. the style of climbing starts to matter. And I think it can be like, people can get in a lot of danger on high balls because they just say like, oh, this is like a V3, that's easy. And then like, not all V3 is easy. And especially yeah. when like, if you're going to break your leg, if you fall, you get sketched out. And then I think what it should do and again, if anyone like asked me, they like, said like, I really want to know kind of like how hard this is. Like, what did you actually think? Like, I have kind of like speculation. Yeah. Um, I think we grading the, like, just saying like this area has problems up to grade, up to like V10. And then- That'd be helpful. Yeah, because then you kind of know like, there's something out there, like if that's like a grade you want to climb, then you kind of yeah. know like there's one of these things is that. And then you're still kind of like going more off of like what's like inspiring you to climb and you're not just like kind of limiting yourself to like well i don't want to try anything that's too easy or too hard like yeah so, so what from your perspective though if going forward that way with a particular craig um meant that let's say five percent of the climbing community would actually go there versus elsewhere how are your thoughts on that? Like the basically the fact that like by not grading stuff, like you're kind of like de like basically making it so that people don't go. Yeah. Um. Again, I mean, I guess there's kind of like upsides and downsides to that. Where mm -hmm. like if if someone's like, I'm not gonna go climbing anywhere where I don't know what the grades are, then like it's one thing to do I that. understand that, but then I also kind of go. You know, but then, okay, 10 years back, even like five years back for me, mm -hmm. and then and still to an extent now, it's like, yeah, I mean, it's probably better off, like, think, giving, like, a grade to things, and I think also to, like, yeah, it wasn't, like, on principle or, a, 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 like, no, having all these problems without a grade, it wasn't, like, a, I'm making a statement, kind of, like, yeah. it's, it's just kind of, like, I don't really care. <laughs> but then, yeah, it's like, is that to the detriment of other people? Kind of. Like, it's probably better if they have a grade. And I do think, uh, most stuff you can, like, pretty accurately go, like, well, it's probably like, this thing's kind of like V7 to V9, and this thing's probably like V5 or V6, one of those, like. You think just by looking at the rock? No, once you've climbed it. Oh, yeah. Like, you definitely, like, I feel like pretty much everything I've climbed, like, I, I can have a pretty good sense of, within a th like three grade range mm. and then like, that should be good enough but it's kind of been, the problem is too is like oh well, well yeah we went to the like beginning intermediate advanced thing then that like that would be really frustrating to people because most people are going to like get to intermediate or advanced and then just kind of like be there forever yeah so that's not very like people want like more like little layers of progression i think and then also if your goal is to climb V10 and we use these kind of brackets, 
then it's like you probably have to climb something that's like probably like v11 or v12 to like get that official like yeah because you're like this one's probably like v8 to v10 and then but they're like i want to climb v10 you're like this one's like this one's like supposed to be like v10 or v11 and you're like yeah so it's probably gonna be really like <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah. then that makes it like you have to definitely work harder to get that like to so yeah i don't know like how would you feel if um somebody was to grade so i think crowfoot glacier is the main spot where you haven't graded yeah if if somebody climbs a climb whoever may be if, if they were like i'm gonna log this on sandage and put yeah. my own grade on it well sam and sam and car and i talked about that and like he he put the ones he's climbed into sandage and kind of graded them okay that's like i do think i think crowfoot was kind of the first one where we were kind of like what do we do here because the whole like skyline thing was still kind of fresh what happened to skyline it just seemed and i think there was like covid fever too okay. whereas like there's just like conflict around it that i wasn't there for it or like but it's just kind of like heard from like various sides like things that had gone on and it felt mm -hmm. like there's like kind of like a competitive rut like this was the new spot and like every, it seemed like a lot of people wanted to kind of get in there and like and then that caused some like conflict okay and uh we we thought like crowfoot might like blow up a little and it hasn't um and just kind of like how do we like option one is we don't tell anyone about it we're like that feels wrong and then so we're like option two is we just like document it same as usual and we're like there's a lot of stuff here we kind of like still want to we just didn't this is like yeah okay it's kind of almost like it uh, this feels like dirty now that i'm saying it was like we kind of like or i felt i keep saying we but it's like i felt like i didn't want we put the and then it's like it's just like swarmed and then there's like a million people like messaging me like we did this thing this thing this thing it's like yeah it wouldn't make me feel like kind of bummed out <laughs> so we're like what do we like, why would they be messaging just that like because like i'm making the topo so then they're like messaging like me like how many how much information am i fielding now where it's like a picture of like we did this thing and we did this thing and, we, and then i'm like because I'm making the topo, so yeah. they're sending me the info for the topo, and I'm like, that's fine. Oh, if they're a thing? Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. And they're kind of like, it's kind of like, I don't know, it's just like, we liked the kind of like wildernessy, like it was kind of like a little bit more remote. It's not that mixed, like the hike is like the easiest, it's super chill. Like, it's just like flat sure, and river. comfy. You have to cross a river, but it, most of the time it's okay. But it just was nice to have like this like kind of just felt like this like backcountry bouldering and like the cool experience or like mm -hmm. you know if if people want to come for the like experience of this place they won't care if there's graves yeah and then yeah I don't, like i don't know if that's was like the right approach or not or <laughs> now i kind of now i'm kind of like i wish more people went there like Maybe they would have if we graded things. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, that's not as though you couldn't regrade if you if you felt like that was a, a good way to go. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. If they're like, are I we mean, going there next year for sure? Yeah. Hopefully, oh. hopefully we'll link up at some point and yeah. do some stuff. I definitely still have like a couple projects out there. Yeah. And I would say too, like if, if any of these things were like, if I felt like we'd done, I'd done something that was maybe like a this is like a new level for or the, like a new addition to that like top level so like there's nothing out there that's like v like 12 v 13 like right i mean i think but it did look like there's many five star lines all through the grades that yeah. i'm sure a lot of people would love to to do yeah i mean for sure there's like the the, the raven and the crow and like the, the scratch in the surface that those have like proven to be like the popular ones mm -hmm. like a lot of stuff is it's kind of like a uh when some people have joined us there it's like um you kind of realize most of the lines are like you're like okay these are like not at most people's alley like they're tall <laughs> like, yeah yeah um but there's like a whole area of like 
moderates to be done. Like there's a whole area of like normal sized boulders that have like probably what would be fun and not too difficult of lines. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I think, yeah, it definitely was. And again, I feel like almost like shame saying it, but it's just like there, the bouldering had exploded and it was like, it was kind of, like, kind of like, man, I kind of like missed the days when it was like a couple of us could just doing our thing and like having fun. And there wasn't like 15 other crews of people. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, so you've experienced 15 other crews. That's probably like an exaggeration, but okay. in local areas, I mean, that's a lot, but I mean, probably definitely where you're like, there's a lot of people here and there's right. like groups and it's, you know, they're, yeah. it's loud. <laughs> like, yeah, no, I, I totally get it. When I, when I spent most of the summer developing that talk, it was very, very nice that it was just me and a, a couple friends and mm -hmm. um, basically had the whole place to yourself. Like, I, th I think even just for people not developing, we, we only saw maybe like five other yeah. human beings out there the whole summer. Like, it, it's very limited, which, which is kind of nice. You know, it's like when I talk about it, like I said, it's like, I must, you don't start feeling like it's like, you're like a, it's like a, it's like bipolar or something. Cause you're like, oh, I'm so psyched. Like people are like, these other people are psyched. Yeah. And it's like, oh, they're like loving these problems. And like, that's so cool. And I was like, I like showing people around and like, mm -hmm. and then the next minute you're kind of like, oh, like these people are playing their music and they're doing yeah. it. And you're like, come on, man. And then, or they're not developing to the standard that you think is, um, like desirable as well i could see that you mean oh uh, like you mentioned some people don't clean um the boulders as thoroughly as you would like them to be so i'm sure that could be a factor in yeah i don't know like um, but would you not care about that like they're just leaving loose flakes i don't like stuff. that <laughs> yeah i don't like it either. Yeah. but then it's like you said like who am i to like I, I didn't, I, I made the same mistake. Yeah. Like many, many times I'm sure they said like, it just did stuff like, where it's like, this landing is clearly dangerous. Like, why didn't you do anything about it? Like this hold is like super sketch. Like, why didn't you clean that? It's like, you kind of only learn by experience and then think like, well, yeah, I like, I don't know how to <laughs> do it the right way, but. Well, could you not learn? from uh, a mentor, like Chief yeah. Josh here. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> like I, I feel mean? like we, like I don't like being like, you know, so it's kind of like, how do you, how do you broach like subjects, like right way, like you think like a- it's Like, hey, this is the standard at this area, X, Y, Z. Yeah, mm -hmm. or it's like people like, even like setting up pads properly, like that's another thing. So like, you're like, what would you like to see us? Like, it's just like, People like being friendly mm -hmm. and like, like safe. Like, I mean, I know like I do lots of highball stuff and it's like, that's objectively dangerous, but it's also like, there's a process behind that. Whereas like, you know, the setting up pads, like you see like, this is just like jumbled, like mess yeah. of like angled pads. And you want to be like, okay, hey, like everybody stop. Like we're gonna, but I'm like, I don't want to be that guy. Like, Why not? <laughs> you could save somebody's ankle. Yeah. <laughs> Like spotting, like yeah, I do. It's like got well, Josh flying in there catching people. But like one time, <laughs> we, went, we went to cathedral, and there's like a group of six or seven people, and they had there's like more pads than people, yeah. and they're on this like little low ball thing. I'm like, in my head, I was like, how is it possible to have this many spotters and pads? And I'm like, I'm worried still, because <laughs> this person would like fall and yeah. like kind of like somersault backwards, like off into like rocks As and, if like, they're climbing and no one's, and I'm like, what is yeah. going And I'll be like, okay, we got to like do this and we got to do it. But like, yeah. I don't know what to, I don't want to be like some like grumpy old man. <laughs> so I've heard that you had sent like 2000 some odd boulders oh. that. Yeah, so I saw that and I was like, I'm going to leave, like, I, I was like, at first I was like, oh, I'm going to mess, like, I'll just be like, okay, it's not that many. Yeah. Um, but I was like, I kind of want it to come up because it, it's so funny, like, <laughs> I'm like, man, maybe I, like, if I never tell anyone anything, it's, it'll, it'll just grow, like, yeah. you know, you maybe next year I'll be like 4,000 problems. Yeah. Um, 
that was, yeah, I don't remember how that came about. No, I, like I had kept track of FAs, or like conceivably FAs, mm -hmm. for quite a while. Um, and, but over the last like few handful of years, like really kind of like stopped keeping track. Okay. Um, so by the way, I was counting things, uh, including like in like around like Kelp Castle Garden revenue, but I mean, there was still a majority of it's like in the Rockies. Like, For sure. It kind of, I know it would have been somewhere between, it's more than 800, it's less than a thousand. Okay. But of things I had like considered FAs, but then in retrospect, you kind of go back and I'm kind of like, well, how many of these things are things that like, someone else had done and it just like was because you know you talk about the you know Simon Villeneuve where it's like he had done stuff at uh, I think Big Tross that probably was like undocumented like Jura I know like when Matt started developing Jura I think it was like there's stuff that Simon in, in Cathedral like Simon had done lots of stuff okay um, I know like uh, there's like Dion I'm not sure how to pronounce his name but um, he had run the the vision climbing gym in Canmore and I know like I, he had done lots of stuff at Cathedral, um, also in Jura, I think. And um, I'm trying to think, like, there's a few other names I want to make sure I mentioned that were like, these are people who, like Dan Archambault, again, like he did uh, lots of stuff in like Hoodoo Creek and uh, Tonquin Boulder, like really hard stuff. Like he had done hard FAs like in South Africa too, like Leap of Faith was like a famous dino he put up. Okay. Um, and I think he had, I kind of asked him, I think like him and Terry had done some stuff in Hoodoo Creek, um, but he basically said like they didn't really document a lot. But again, those were guys who were like in that like V12, V13 climbing level, mm -hmm. like in the early 2000s, and uh, they were climbing stuff like locally in the Rockies, and um, it just kind of like got lost to time. I think some of it. So, mm -hmm. but anyways, so yeah, I started thinking like there's probably a f there's probably quite a few things I've done that seemed like FAs that like weren't. And I started to think too, like, you know, if you do like a stand start, a sit start, is that two FAs, is that like, so then you kind of like, and then like, yeah, some stuff definitely, some stuff, you know, like maybe you should have just done it from the sit because that was yeah. more obvious. Um, and then some link ups, where you're like, some link ups are really good and create like distinctly like new sections and like a harder climb and then some link ups are so you know yeah I kind of thought like everything that I, I kind of like privately kind of like ticked a little like FA box for myself on anything that essentially ranged from like this was like definitely an FA to things that were this was kind of like a FA experience because I didn't know anything about it, mm -hmm. but, um, and so yeah, that number, like I said, is like, I know for sure, like it was not a thousand, but it was definitely like over 800 when I had like stopped keeping track. Okay. Um, but then in red, like if some, like I would say like, yeah, it's just like, a few hundred good ones. It's kind of like, <laughs> like when I look back now and I think like, like how many FAs have you done? Like, yeah, probably a few hundred good ones, and then several like a few hundred more not good ones, like <laughs> questionable things. Yeah, um, it's like space filler climbs. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's kind of how I had like kept track of it over time. And sure. It's enough. And I kind of thought like, the more I did, the more I kind of thought too was like, cause I saw someone that asked a question there once they were talking about, there's like route development. And there's like this debate of like, should the person who like bolted this a route get to name it and get credit for it? And like, do we put too much emphasis on the FA? And I kind of thought like, it, it seemed the context of the discussion seemed like, seeking credit mm. and, was, and my thought was kind of like if you know do i want to be 
if you like think of like you want to look at like a like what part of the story of the the climbing history do you want to play or how do you want to be known and it's kind of like if you do enough if you contribute enough then you'll like be included in that story so it's not so much about like the, the specifics as it is like yeah like put up good problems like build top of like share information like be like a like if you do that work then that's kind of what matters besides and not as much as like you know i did all these ones <laughs> like, yeah yeah um yeah and i think something probably like that we we talked about the develop like de when i started developing and it's like <laughs> ridiculous that it doesn't really come up yet that like that so like it was like scott and mark evely mm -hmm. so like when that like in 2014 when like dan and i kind of focused on frank and then that's where like trent and mark and kyle and morgan and evan were going like that's when scott and mark started going to the nest so like, that like in 2014 was like the year they were kind of like started in there and matt, that was with like matt lucas too yeah, yeah. Uh, a few other, like andrew funk i think put up a few things there's a few other people um, and then the next year, no, 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 2014 is Old Goat. So I think, yeah, Old Goat, 2014, they like did the bulk of the development there. Okay. And then 2015 was kind of like the nest. And I think 2017 was like gateway, but like that was a lot more impressive, like development efforts because of, I think there's a lot more like. Those are harder to get to. There was less known and like the cleaning was harder. Like Frank was kind of like handed on a silver platter. It was like, right. I feel like those guys were going and finding stuff. Um, so that like always like really impressed me. And then like, of course, like Wonder Valley and stuff like that. Definitely. And then like, uh, as far as like putting up like cool problems in cool places and like that, uh, the Evely effort really like was inspiring. And then, and there's quite a bit of people that went along with them, like so, like and then Matt Lucas, like bringing back like Jura, who's like that's like anytime I was like putting in that time and putting together the effort, and then like this year, like tack, like you putting up like all the tack stuff, like, it's just like yeah, it's like a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it doesn't like I guess if you do it as it's happening, it's definitely a lot easier than like going back and trying to like redo it. Like if you go out and you put up five problems today. And then you just like add that into your topo. It's like definitely a, a better way of doing it. But if you added up all the hours, it's still like so much. So yeah, some of the best hours of our lives. Though. Yep, yeah. for sure. And then, like so, Randy Col like Randy Coleman's a name again. I've heard and guess mentioned. I think Big Choss, but like early days in Cathedral. Like I think maybe he's someone who went with Marcus. Okay. Um, I think I might have like remember Kent. Do you remember Kent Dunham? I'm not sure I've ever met him. So I feel like I maybe like met Randy Coleman, like maybe he was like sport climb with Kent or something. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's like, I kind of want to throw names out because even if it's like someone I didn't know, or I don't personally know, it's like, mm -hmm. this is someone that I've heard this name come up a lot and they've like done, they like made a contribution in some way, like finding an area mm -hmm. or like, and it's like, yeah, I think what I'd be really psyched is like, I feel like honored you asked me to do this, but I would be so psyched to see like, I mean, I guess that's asking you to do work, but it'd be so <laughs> cool if like, you know, you say like, I mentioned some people and then you're like, you talk to those people. It's like, yeah. And like, uh, even Danny kind of said that she's like, it'd be cool if you did like a round table thing. <laughs> it would be very cool. Like if you had like, yeah, like multiple people and like those different generations mm -hmm. of, is like just had like my big list of names and I was like, I feel like for example, it's like, yeah, we totally just, I guess we mentioned Loa kind of in passing that's like, he put up River Monster. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, yeah, he's definitely, I think, I think of like Zach and Loa and you and like Mark and like, they, like Scott and Mark Ely, like I think of, that's like i see you guys like doing the next level of things for sure so, like it's like i feel sometimes like the it's kind of weird i'm like i'm not like the og generation 
of like the first like when like bouldering kind of took off and it's like I, I don't but now I kind of realize I'm like I'm not like the new young guy either so it's like I'm kind of in this like in between spot um but yeah like and then like what Loic's like put up in cathedrals like super impressive totally and uh that was another thing we, I had written down about like going to other, like where are the hard boulders here, things like I think um, it's not for a lack of like talent. Kind of. You know, like, lo like if I think if you, like I said, that group of people, like you and Zach and Mark, like if we transplant you guys, like if we transplant like the, 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 the kind of top people pushing bouldering locally, to somewhere like Colorado, it's like, I think you guys are like, I mean, I think we have lots of people who are climbing, like, not just like V13, but like more, like harder than that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of stuff at that level, like no doubt, so. Is that because we're a bit sandbagged in Alberta or what? Um, what I don't, that? I don't think, I think it would, grades here seem the same as anywhere. It's just like, it's all over the map. <laughs> we do have a lot of like unrepeated stuff. Right. So there's gonna be stuff that gets like significantly upgraded. There's gonna be stuff that gets significantly downgraded. Like I said, I think it's just like, so for me, I said like V13 was, is an important grade or what was an important grade. Yeah. And I had sampled, I had made over the last couple of years a point of like sampling stuff at that level in a few different areas. Mm -hmm. And it does become so like the closer you get to that, like top end for you, the more it does become about like style and how it suits you. Okay. So. Like I said, I think it's like the rock type and the seasons we have here that it just kind of, we haven't found the spot yet or like, so for like Joe's I went to and there's like one thing I tried that's like now considered because of some breaks is like 13 slash 14. Mm -hmm. I was like, I think I can do this like, you know, maybe like the next time I go Okay. kind of thing like this is something i want to get back on because it's like this feels like really doable like right there mm -hmm. and then there's something else i tried this considered like 12 slash 13 and it's like this feels like you know like not as doable immediately doable as the other one but like definitely like something i, I can get done mm -hmm. and i tried another thing that's just like benchmark 13 and yeah. it's like I think I can do all the moves eventually, but not the thing. Gotcha. And then I tried another classic one and I was like, I will never be able to do the moves on this, I don't think. And it's just like different, like one's power endurance, one's yeah. reachy, one's small, like super tight bot, like it's just the different styles. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it does, as far as like I said, it's not, it's not how good you get as a climber. It's like, what does your resume look like? Like on paper, what have you done? Yeah. And if that matters to you, it is important to like go all over the place and be in like where, you know, I can, you can try, if you have like a hundred things V13 and up to try, yeah. you try them, you're going to find some that like, like this is the one for me and you'll like do it. If you have, I think I lucked out with uh, the Sage being like that actually, yeah. even though we don't have many 12s, I just lucked out on it being something that suited yeah. me quite well. And uh, so yeah I and mean, i think when we shouldn't like put ourselves down like <laughs> it's hard it's like the the scene and the crew here is like as talented like it's talented it's it's just like it's not a bouldering hub yeah. like it's not it's not <laughs> yeah it's like it's not utah it's not colorado in terms of like like the 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 scene in terms of people and the scene mm -hmm. in terms of like option like hard like areas and boulders and options. It's just like, it's not, it's not there yet. Yeah. But if you took that like same, so they got the crew of people, I mean, Loic does up to V12, like fast everywhere he goes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like Zach just like crushes, like he does you like everything. Think, yeah. Like we just had like, yeah, it's like the talent, is there and the drive is there and it's just like yeah yeah that's, that's like always kind of an interesting thing um i mean like trent or not trent sorry uh tristan and bradley and like the highwood stuff is like yeah those guys are like super psyched and like that's super cool 
Yeah, okay. yeah, their their psych is like a, a flood. Yeah, you know? it's a, it's pretty wild. That leads me a little bit into a question about uh, the future in the next couple of years of uh, hard Alberta Boulder. Yeah, you, know? you have lots of people whose level is rising, as well as we luckily have the addition of a few 13s and, and that now a 14. Yeah. So, yeah, do you kind of expect in the next couple of years for, for the hard bouldering at least to really kind of blow up or do you expect it to just kind of stay at the very slow pace that it's been? Um, yeah, it's hard to say because... I know you're not like a weatherman. Yeah. yeah. But it'd be interesting to hear your perspective. Um, hmm. I think if... I think if we had people, I think if we had like climbers visit that were like, um, like really like established like B15 and like more people like Austin, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Then I have no, like, then I think it, there could be an explosion or a relative explosion just yeah. in the sense that, you know, I can think of, a couple large handfuls of problems that are, are projects that are like, you know, in that B13, B14 range. And like, then it's kind of hard to know exactly how hard things might be, but yeah. um, you know, there's like the Beach Cape project, there's like the disease project, there's the um, Sunny, Sunny Corner. corner. Yeah. Um, there's like the vicious sit start, there's the like moment of truth sit start, there's the shield bow start maybe? Shield bow start is kind of like, yeah, the tra traverse in. There's, there's lots of stuff. Yeah. So, but it's not going to, it's not going to develop quickly. If, you know, if you have people that are capable of that, like B13, B14 level, it's like, that's like your, your kind of capability or potential or what you're working towards. It's like, it's not just going to get done. Yeah, for sure. It's going to be like a slow burn. Whereas if, more pe if people come that you know they're already climbing like B15 and they're like there's this thing there's this thing and like, yeah. like they can then, put the problems down within yeah. a day or two yeah then and you know there's definitely like strong like youth climbers like coming up that if they're interested in going outside like they're definitely gonna be like better yeah than like definitely better than me um so yeah i think it's i do feel like it's, there's like the discovering of areas i i think is the more i look on the satellite and the more i go to like you know rock bound just blew my mind mm -hmm. but it's and you know and there's like some stuff there that's like gonna be like insanely good and kind of like next level hard i think but it's going to take like a group of, you know, five or more people wanting to go do this thing together to have enough, like the right amount of pads and yeah, kind of like, and then like, uh, I think that's actually a big factor. The amount of people that are developing in one spot, because let's say you have one person developing one boulder, um, you know, you, every time they show up, that's one session, but if you have five people showing up to the same boulder, you're essentially having five sessions for every one session yeah. that you otherwise would. So, yeah, I think more people being involved in developing would certainly speed things up. Yeah. You're just like sharing beta, like, yeah, you kind of get into your own little like beta traps where you're like finding this way that works for you. I think the only other thing I saw is like, I was like, uh, I think like Sandro should get a shout out for kind of like spearheading the like Wabba stuff, or it seems like he. To, to my knowledge, he's the mm -hmm. one who kind of like really got the ball rolling on that. So that's like Western Alberta Bouldering Association. And so they've like put in like trail cams at say like, a, I think there's one at Big Choss, there's one at Skyline. So they can kind of like monitor like usage. Mm -hmm. And then I think, you know, based on that, then that kind of like gives some, uh, you know, you're, you're showing like we are an active and like large user group. And so like, then we can be can, like, that helps with, I think like having a voice and like 
uh, those like parks and recreation areas and yeah. um, then we can get like you know signage and trail building and um, I think it's just like yeah like all the any sort of like political or like uh, regulation type stuff like they they I'm assuming deal with and then there's like fundraisers and stuff it's just like I'll just like make the bouldering areas like more protected and mm -hmm. protect access and make sure we have a voice in like kind of if there's like decision making about like area use and stuff and okay. like tr so like Trent there's like also Saba for like Southern Alberta Bouldering Association so they're like I don't know how much they like communicate or collaborate but it's kind of the same thing like where I think like Trent has done a lot with like parks and historic sites to you know make sure that it's understood like that the like what bouldering is in Frank and like what that brings to like the kind of like community in terms of like you know this is like a a group of people who are like you know we're you're coming we're using the area we're like taking you're kind of like stewards of the area we're like using the services of the community so this is a good thing yeah and uh definitely like yeah people who are doing people who are doing more to preserve the sport then mm. i just like going and doing it <laughs> like yeah it's like these people are yeah, the investing be their time and energy into like yeah like protecting it so <laughs> sure well thanks so much for doing this josh yeah thanks and, a lot uh, it's been a real pleasure chatting with you this whole time and learning a vast amount that i did not know before so. yeah hopefully it's like useful or interesting to to someone and like yeah. it's like kind of like very uh like it feels I it feels good to me to think like someone's interested in a little bit of like yeah what I have what I can remember and totally hopefully I didn't say anything too stupid or <laughs> <laughs> we could edit that out <laughs> yeah. and yeah yeah so it'd be like really cool to see kind of like more stuff like this and I think it is like the best medium like writing about it is I don't know somehow like talking about it it's just like more comes out and it's like yeah more uh consumable to more people and yeah i think it was like a great idea so definitely yeah, right. i hope i uh, did a good job asking some reasonable questions as well i know it's I know. no i thought that like set of questions you sent me was like great it's like this is yeah. like, kind of this will like yeah this will like cover everything that should be get covered although once we started uh, it was basically off script for the majority so yeah which it's you kind of, you probably have to like <laughs> I, 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 we listening back to it it would be like incomprehensible like yeah this like how did like we get from here to like there's you know yeah. like the the least linear path of conversation so mm -hmm. which is actually it's funny they give us a podcast and they talk about like how much editing goes into it yeah like i was like what do you mean like you just kind of and now having like done this i'm like it was yeah it was like so non-linear yeah like yeah. to make it like digestible to an audience where it's like or like coherent it's like <laughs> it's probably a lot of work <laughs>